Good morning. Welcome to the Modus Super Series. Series six is underway. Uh, week one was last week and week two sees loads of familiar faces and plenty of former winners on that stage behind me here in Portsmouth. And here in Portsmouth on Saturday, we got our first winner of Series six. Here's what happened. It was Vava Bloom as Germany's Nico Bloom flower powered past frustrated Frenchman Thibaut Tricot. Scotland's Willie Borland also kicked off with a 4-1 victory thanks to rescuing this shot for a bullseye finish versus Jared Cole. Harry Ward beat Bloom, but he secured the two legs he needed to progress despite defeat to Ward here. Borland joins him by beating Charlie Large. Treacle went out despite victory over Ward, who went through to the semi-finals. As did home hero Large, the Pompey player producing a big performance and a big finish to see off Cole. It wasn't to be for the local lad though, as Bloom bagged a place in the final on his Moda Super Series debut. There, he would meet Borland, who turned on the style to succeed in his semi against Ward. The week one final set up. Towards the finishing line. Game. And Josh wonderful Willie and wins it. The Motor Super Series, Series 6, week one winner, Willie Borland. Borland with a big performance in the final. Bags a place at Champions Week. The first one, Braum Series 6. Fantastic stuff from the Scotsman who gets over the line. An emphatic final performance in the end. Yeah, myself and Paul Nicholson on commentary during that finals night. Paul, will he ball under worthy winner? Very much so. I think when you talk about the group stages that we had on Saturday night, there was a little lack of quality. And in the, the frame for Thibaut Tricol, he'll be devastated with his beginning. Obviously, his second game went his way, but he just got such a slow start. And he was out before the knockout stages. He was devastated at that. And I know Jared Cole was as well. But when you look at the overall night, Willie Borland turned on the style when it was needed. And he was the only person who was able to do that at the right times. So well done, Willie. Absolutely. And it, it was his first weekly win here at the Super Series. Maybe a surprise to some. Uh, but this week, we've got plenty of weekly winners in action in week two. Um, Andy Bolton there. Uh, we've seen Anton Osland, of course, winning the last series. Mike Gillett's won a week here. So has Adam Mould and Jamie Kelling from Group C. So there's a lot of experience on that stage. But some of the players that haven't will be staking their claim as well. You can look at it one of two ways. You can expect from the players who have done it before. But because we've got so many former weekly champions here in week two, the people who have not been here before will think that there's no pressure on them. But I think we give these players enough notice before they come here that if they don't prepare, they will fail in the arms of uh, players like Andy Bolton and Jamie Kelling and everybody in between because they all know how to do it. Yeah, well, let's see how the, the bookies have priced it up, the outright betting for the week. They've gone with Andy Bolton as favourite, closely followed by Scott Mitchell and then Dom Taylor, all players in Group A. Would you agree with that? I think that's spot on. Andy Bolton being the favourite is, is absolutely nailed on because he just knows how to do this. His hit rate in making Saturday nights is perfect. Like a few other players, we'll get into that in due course. But Mitchell with his quality and with Dom Taylor in form, he's made a semi-final on the Pro Tour very, very recently uh, towards the end of that season. So we've got to watch out for him but he's one of the players who hasn't won on this stage yet. So if there's going to be someone to get a new name on that weekly trophy, then it might be Dom. Yeah, it's interesting to see Tommy Morris as well as 
next in line in the betting. Um, he's coming in later in the week. But let's focus on Group A for now. This is how the odds compilers have priced up this group. And similar story, really. Bolton, followed by Mitchell, followed by Taylor. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people out there who might think that uh, Anton Usland at 8-1 to one is a bit long. But when you consider the form of Dom Taylor and the, the quality that you're going to get from Scott Mitchell at times, I think they've got it spot on at this stage. I don't think there's a great deal of pressure in Group A on Victor Tingstrom and Nathan Treadgold on debut. I think that those guys have probably got more likelihood of making Saturday night through a secondary group as opposed to this one. For those top three, then, do you think it's about the matches against each other as to who wins this group? Yeah, I think it probably is. Uh, when we look at the experience that we've got with Andy and Scott, for instance, that fixture promises much, and I'm sure we're going to get great games from them over the next three days, but uh, it may be those fixtures that give us the, the four pointers that point towards who's going to get the two days off on Thursday and Friday. Potentially one of those coming up first as well. But before we get into the opening match, here is this morning's bet builder, uh, a treble put together with some of the most popular bets on the exchanges. And this is what they've gone for, Paul. Ursuline to beat Mitchell, an interesting one, 11 to 8. Um, Taylor to it at least one maximum against Tingstrom. Then the handicap betting, Bolton minus 1.5 against the debutant Treadgold, almost 7 to 1. Well, let's go in reverse order. Let's took a, uh, look at Bolton versus Treadgold. I, I like that one. I like the handicap on that because of uh, the likelihood of a, of a big win for Andy in that one. Uh, Taylor versus Tingstrom, Taylor over 0.5180. So he just needs the one maximum in the game doesn't tend to hit a great deal of maximums per game, so that's a maybe for me. But the top one, that's going to be match six between Ursland and Mitchell, and I fancy Mitchell to win that one, so I don't agree with the top one, but if you fancy a punt, well, it's there. Yeah, and do it responsibly. Please gamble responsibly, 18 plus begamblerware.org for all the information on safe gambling. Right, Paul Nicholson's going to head downstairs where Chris Mason has joined us for commentary this week, and the opening match is one of those big ones in this group. Dom Taylor taking on Andy Bolton. Thank you, Murph, and good morning, everybody. And, oh, what a day we could have in store, starting with two of the three real big hitters in terms of running averages. The seasonal average of Andy Bolton, 89.68. The next one closest to him is Scott Mitchell, 89.17. Closely behind, 88.64 for this man, Dom Taylor. So he is a player on the ascendancy, certainly in terms of ability, consistency. First leg, Dom to throw first. Yeah, another exciting Game talent on. from the West Country. Congratulations to Mark Dubridge, who hit his fourth nine darter at the weekend. But the very first one on the Seniors Tour, another player, of course, 40. from the West Country. They did go one five to six 40. each of two in terms of betting, so the... Cookies couldn't make up their mind, but that just shows you the fear factor they have in Dom Taylor. Good morning, Paul. A good morning, Miss. Is it nice to see somebody 40. from your part of the world on the hockey here on a Monday yeah, morning? Yeah, I've been I've been following his his progress closely for the last few years. Fifty nine. Do know a few of his friends and family. What do you make of his setup? Because you don't tend to see many players throwing 56. with an upright angle of attack, but with that shape of a flight, which is very slim, it's very tailor like, which I suppose his nickname is as well. <laughs> 162. Because he's Dom the Tower Taylor. Yeah, well, what it tells me is he has a very clean release because those darts would be. They're not too dissimilar to mine, apart from the flight size. But they're very unforgiving. So if, you your, if your release isn't clean, it'll be exaggerated by the by the time it reaches the board. But <coughs> he has no issues at all. Hits lots of one eighties. Does Dom Taylor?
player that's growing in experience. He has had opportunities, of course, on the on the pro tour as a reserve. Ninety nine under your car, forty. His running average for the season, Paul, eighty eight point six four. That's very very good. Yeah, it's not bad at all. That might take him quite far this week. Game shot on but the How far flag. can Andy he Bolton. go against someone like Bolton, who has made Portsmouth his second home in twenty twenty three? Second leg, Andy to throw. When first. I see him on a Game weekly on. roster, I automatically think, which group is he going to play in on Saturday? Because there are four players here this week who have perfect records in making Saturday night. 100. One is Andy Bolton. He's done it three times out of three. Tommy Morris has done it three times out of three, but Tommy hasn't won a week yet. Andy has. And... Andy's other two visits to Saturday resulted in losing in the final. His hit rate when he 95. comes here is absolutely brilliant. Well, he's he rarely wavers, does he? He's just rock solid. He sort of know where his numbers are going to be. And he sort of 59. plays within that range. And we talk about ranges a lot. His range is, is not particularly big. It's He's just a proper, decent, solid pro. Speaking of decent and solid, the other two players 56. who have perfect records of making Saturday night are Dom Taylor and Anton Ursland, and they're both in this group, of course. Taylor, just like Bolton, has made three Saturdays from three attempts. One out of them, And that 40. makes this first game of the week very, very strong. One out of them, 40. A very tidy 140, but Andy Bolton still retains control of this first game of the week. Yeah, Andy's highest TV average, 101.69. 100. His highest ever recorded official average, 108.91. And again, that range is not massive. He doesn't tend to have many bad games. No. I think his I bad think game is probably about 82. And you know, he's not, he's not that, it doesn't have that real explosive nature to his game, but as you're seeing here, he's, he's, on the second he's just, leg. He's just tough to beat because he does things like that. He, he's, he's like a Matt Clark, isn't he? They're like Tom to throw first. You know, you might, you're not going to see the 115s from him, but you'll see sort of numbers, anything from... 95 to 105. Well, I think you're probably the 100. ideal person to talk to about this because I think the complexion of how people look at dart players has changed in the last generation. You walk around the streets, you walk around darts venues, and you may 69. look at someone like Dom Taylor and say, he's promising, he can play. But when you used to go around a local tournament about 20 years ago and you ran into someone like Ronnie Baxter, or someone like Matt Clark or Andy Bolton, you'd think, 59. what are they doing here? I know what they can do because they're an international and they had this mystique about them. That mystique, it doesn't 16. really exist anymore. Well, no, man, by the way, we watch the game. I mean, there's so much like what we do here and, and of course, all the events now that we, we get to see and we get to see the numbers. There's no... Everything on Dart Connect now, or or Darts Atlas. There's no, there's no real hiding place. So you can't, you can't be one of these players that sort of go in, go under the radar. I used to see them at the holiday camps, and they'd all be this, the same kind of players, all popping up, but you had no data on them because it wasn't available. Ninety-seven. Yeah, back in the day when we had no more Super Series and we had very few TV tournaments, you'd go to local events around the country and. Someone would pop up and the mood would 94. change. But now, everybody seems to go to everything. And now with the amateur dart circuit, there are big names playing in that as well. And darts is everywhere, which is great well, for people's ambitions. We're about to enter a, for me, a, a new period in the game, especially with the way... That the the PDC are now structuring their pro tours. I, I see a lot of them here. A lot of people, not necessarily complaining, but saying, well, maybe I'll have to go a different route." Sixty-three under your car, one hundred and fifty. 
Oh, one could get three bulls. The other one could get bull 25 bull. Whereas Dom Taylor should Dom start on the bull, and he was never going to do so. Just a play on numbers, really. Okay, so 60 tops. How nice does that look? Game that is such a wonderful Dom finish. Taylor. Dom Taylor with a little bit of early morning class on the dartboard. That really is wonderful with a, with a head first. tilt from me, Game which on. gives it everything it deserves. That was wonderful. Yeah, especially at 2-0 down and didn't panic. One hundred. Dom Taylor hasn't won a weekly title here so far, but he has lost in a final. I suppose when you look at the protagonists who have made finals, who might be next off the conveyor belt, he's near the top, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's certainly one that we're going to watch with interest at Q School in January. And does he come into this week with maybe more confidence and more readiness than ever? Because he has made a semi-final on the PDC Pro Tour in the last month. And get a load of the names that he beat en route to 100. a dart to actually win that semi-final against Ross Smith. He eventually won the title, so he lost to the eventual winner that day. But this is who he beat en route to that semi-final. Simon Whitlock, Daryl Gurney, Andrew Gilding, Darren Webster and Raymond Van Barneveld. That's that's some run. Yeah, major champion. When like say, when, you, when, when you have a run like that, Paul, it just and you're sort of at the place where Dom Taylor is in his career, that that gives you genuine belief because there's evidence of it. You know, so I've right, beaten the odd name player now and again, but when you when you have a run like that on a day, the the confidence it gives you to go forward, and that might may well be the catalyst for him to. Just make that next jump. And he's actually beaten Andrew Gilding again since then. And the so he's got 12. the owning of the UK Open champion. But does he have the owning of the X Factor from north of the border? Let's find out as he goes for 68 in a 2 2 game. Dominic 68. Might need to take this. And he does. Flag, Dom Taylor. Another show of class from Dom. This game has changed in the last couple of legs. Thankfully, for Dom one. and those two really good checkouts of 68 and 125. It's been a solid game so far. 59. First game on on a Monday morning. Winning legs for Andy Bolton in 14 and 15. 18 and 14, the response from Dom Taylor. Probably another thing has changed as well. One out of them, You and I have been part of the the furniture of the Motor Super Series for ever since it started. And it used to be the case on a Monday morning that the first round of matches would just be feeling things out. One and you might get an average of about 78 to 82. Not so much on the Monday morning anymore. So what does this tell you about the players? The fact that they can do this Order early and things are getting better. Well, it's a great sign for things to come this week. I mean, there is there is some definite separation when you look at the... 98. The top three in, in terms of seasonal averages in Bolton, Mitchell and Taylor... There's a, there's a big gap between the other three players in this group Dominic in terms of quality. So when you see two of the top three performing at this level, it's going to be a tough week, you would think, for Tingstrom, Usland, for gold. And you'll count 46. That really was a bit of a heart and mouth moment there for Andy Bolton, who's left himself on double 16 after 10 darts. 30. And because he doesn't Dominic take the 12, 72. he might just find himself behind. It's another one of those combination finishes. Not missed a double yet. Can he find tops? He hit it beautifully on the back of the 125. 
52. And your car, 16. A nice attacking dart. Who waits for the break of throw? Have a chance to serve it out in leg six. Game shot on the fifth leg. Andy Bolton. Great game of darts to start our week. Bolton is showing us everything in his arsenal and everything. Six leg Andy to throw first. He must game have saw, seen from Mr. Motivator this morning <laughs> with some shoulder stretches and a chest stretch. And that. Look at Dom's getting involved as well. You know what? People don't realise that it's, it's not actually sort of natural to wake up and, and throw darts. I talk to a lot of young players at the minute about warming up their arms and their wrists. And it's something that most dart players don't do effectively. Just see young players wake up, start throwing darts. 99. Warm up your hips, your knees, your ankles, your wrists. You you want to be nice and supple to throw darts. You don't want to have any stiffness. No, well, that, that of course, will... 65. Will mean that you'll, you'll feel tight. If you're tight, the ner nerves make you... Make your muscles tight anyway. Not to let out one of my former trade secrets, but before every World Championship match I ever played, 100. I used to do an hour of yoga in the morning. It was good for breathing, it was good for anxiety, and it was really good for stretching out tight muscles. And then I'd usually go for a, a little bit of a run to get some fresh air. Didn't do me any harm. Actually, it's... A great natural way of, of removing anxiety, isn't it? The chemicals that are created no, by the you. brain during exercise are natural anti-anxiety chemicals. Maybe a little sign there from Andy that One he's not part 40. of a new school of counting because 271 usually sees younger players going for the 19s, but he still gets two trebles to set up a match-winning opportunity. Oh, build it to leave 24, but he takes 64. And, and, Ocar, and so, yeah, you can see 100. the reaction. It feels like that should have been more. Game one, whatever happens, no need to panic. 57. Very easy for Don me Ocar, to say at this point, but nobody has ever won all of their games in Group A. It's one of the only things that hasn't been done here at the Motor Super Series. Andy Bolton on multiple occasions has reached 26 points, which is exactly what Thibaut Tricol got okay. last week. And they were 74. Four players have had 28, but nobody's had 30. I wonder if that'll happen this week. Mm, unlikely in this group. Game shot and the man. What a Andy wonderful Bolton. start for Andy Bolton. He is the group favourite and the favourite to win this week. And he's just proven why. Because that 4 2 victory against Dom Taylor was an excellent first game for any session, never mind Monday morning. 94.88 the average and 50% on the doubles. We had some excellent finishing in that game from both players as well. Follow that, everybody. And you're going to have a Swede making his second appearance here at the Motor Super Series next in Victor Tingstrom. And he's taking on the former Lakeside champion, Scott Mitchell.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where Andy Bolton had a very strong start to the Week 2 campaign in Series 6. Certainly had the X Factor in the opener, but now it's a man who was sat behind the mic last week. Scott Mitchell is now on the stage looking to get victory at the Super Series and let his darts do the talking. He takes on Victor Tingstrom in his opening match and a man who has won on that stage before, Chris Mason, is alongside Paul Nicholson in commentary. Thank you, Murph, and I hasten to add on debut as well. So, come on, Scott. I know he won that little thing in Brimley Green, but if you want something with prestige on your resume, Nico, you've got to win one of these. I'll include you in that conversation. I, I can't say anything. I didn't win the same week that you played. <laughs> I didn't even make the Saturday. But at least Scott's made a Saturday. I wonder if he's going to make this Saturday, but... I think the biggest thing, as he goes up against the 22-year-old from Stockholm, his second visit here, and he didn't make Saturday in his first trip, but 53-year-old from Dorset, who has made a Saturday previously, will be thinking that winning here is missing from his resume. First leg, Victor to He'll want to fix that this week, that's for sure. But I think the biggest point is that when Scott has been here before, it's been a relatively short week. Yes. This is now a long format challenge for him. Yeah, well, during the summer months, because obviously his commitment 100. to the farm was pretty much impossible. Now, that shirt, Nico, is that is that tractor tire treads over the dog? What, what's, what's going on there? 140. I hope they're bones. <laughs> As if the tractor treads. My friends at Battersea are not going to be happy with uh, <laughs> Mr. Mitchell. 140. Now, are we seeing some new equipment here from Scott Mitchell? Yeah, he's been testing new equipment. It's been sent from Japan. And it does take a little bit of time for that stuff to get 140. here. 140. But I think... According to what he said to me the last time I saw him, he's finally got it right. Yeah, well, the last time I think we were in comms together and we had that very conversation. And he said, he's, he's with a new manufacturer now, of course. So all those sort of small changes gonna going to take a while. But he said he'd, he sort of had it in his head how it, what he wanted. But they are quite unusual. But Victor, can't not too many players use smooth barrels anymore. In fact, they're coming more and more aggressive. Speaking of aggressive, I'm not sure there is a player as 96. aggressive Scott as Victor Tingstrom this week because he throws them about as hard as anybody. Yeah, where Scott's got quite a, what a lovely soft throw, hasn't he? Fifty-six. Yeah, it glides Victor through the air, doesn't it? Yeah. As opposed to Victor, who throws them and they've got absolutely no choice. <laughs> One left. 20. Like Scott I've got to do that again, Scott. I like the look of that dart again. There's, there's more and more darts now. The players are starting to come round to, to my early thinking of the, the, the slight scallop in the dart. 73. Fascinating from Mitchell Victor early Kyle here. 20. As he decides not to go for tops. Well, that's to go usually for his, his MO, isn't it? Oh, double four. Goldilocks for Goldilocks. 16. Scott Ricard, 32. Last time he was here, Victor did have a few games where he missed a few doubles. He waits for Mitchell. He 16. continues to miss as well. Victor Ricard, 4. Desmond for Victor. Sounds like a police call, doesn't it? And it's no still shot. not there. Scott Lucar, 16. Maybe we were spoiled in that first game of the day with the quality that we saw. Double four. Will the Farmy Army be happy with dart three? Eight. Victor Wasn't happy with 
that dark. Again, sometimes we don't get the player's eye view of a, a shot. Getting shot on the what usually player. happens, Richard Nico, so. is when you start with a leg like this, the a match can sometimes just fall into a Second leg Scott to throw a first. doubling fest. Yeah, let's have a little look at these barrels for Mitchell then. The bottom 75% is fairly smooth, but the top are very detailed indeed, and that is where he holds yes. the barrel. Yeah, he holds the, the back of the dart, very much like Nathan Aspinall. It just goes to show, you need grip where you hold it, and you don't need grip where you don't hold it. So are there too many players out there at the minute who have grip where they don't need it? Well... If the barrel's smoother, 100. one thing, it'll go through the air slightly easier. I think in terms of deflections as well, it's got to help. And, of course, if, if he's is. not holding the dart exactly where he wants, he will know because there's no grip there. It's almost forcing him to be consistent in terms of barrel position in the hand. Yeah, it's, it's almost taking the design of a barrel back to basics. Whereas we've got a lot of great technologies, coatings and personalizations at the minute, but 134. essentially when you're looking for a dart for yourself, look at how you naturally hold a dart, put grip where you hold it, and don't put grip where you don't hold yeah, well, it. What I, what I did, I, I had my Bristos, and then I covered them in permanent marker, seven. and I practiced Victor with them for a few hours. And I took them down to Lee at Wimmore and Red Dragon, and I said, right, this is... You know what he's like. He went, "Oh, I know what you want," and it, literally, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't hold them in any other spot than the actual spot where I would naturally Got grip the dart. One hundred and thirty-four. We're going to learn a lot about Scott's game this week as to where he likes to go for certain shots now compared to what he used to do, because we've already seen fifty-eight his proclivity of leaving 86. double sixteen instead of tops. Will that continue this week? That's 85 left for Victor. He does run the risk 30. of Scott that 76. dart dropping quite low because that release can sometimes be quite late. Uh, and the speed. And aggression. Oh, let's see what he's like on tops. Game shot on the second leg. Scott Mitchell. Silence is golden from the commentary box because sometimes the They're old like ways are the best. First. Game on. Now this action from Victor is very quick. And it One when it works, way. it looks tremendous. But sometimes I'm with you, Miss. I just think that it's the drawback element for me that's just a little quick. Yeah, and unlike most quick aggressive players, they're they're FDMs, 100. aren't they? For start merchants. Quite an engaging character is Victor. I think it definitely benefits him and Anton Usland to both be here at the same time because yeah. Victor, the last time he was here, had Oscar Lukasia for company. And I'm sure that helps linguistically. And the fact that they know each other. 70. Whereas Anton was predominantly on his own from a Swedish point of view. When we see him in game three against Nathan Treadgold, he had Benjamin Drews for company that week, but he's from Denmark. He's not Swedish. Got a glittering CV, has Look Scott Mitchell. 84. But he has not won in Portsmouth yet. He was to make Saturday, it would be some party. Game but the party the belongs leg. to the 12 daughter man called Victor Tingstrom, who takes the third leg. Things are looking up all of a sudden. Yeah, beautiful Ball leg there from Victor. First. Game on. Short is on the back foot momentarily. But I think, I agree, I think he will benefit massively from having the full week. 100. He can, he can grow into it. It'll bring back memories of playing darts from home when 
95. I'm sure he doesn't mind me saying this, but we used to have webcams pointing at us and half the screen on our dartboards and he used to have his own little advertisement hoarding, which Six was eight. covering up a certain part of his study, I believe. And those weeks were very, very long. We'd play for six straight days, have a day off on a Sunday. 97. During the COVID pandemic, we were just happy to play. It was hard work, but my word, it was so welcomed. And we will always be grateful for that. And that's where this started. Yeah, and well, so are the Welcome players, back. because outside of the Pro Tour, there was, there was nothing for them to play in or have any... 164. Oh, that's a great shot. Or have any ability to, to earn money. I played many games against Scott Mitchell during those at-home months. 81. Victor the likes of Mike Warburton and Mark Webster and Dave Evans and Richie Edhouse became greats of the at home stuff. Speaking of great, 105. Oh, the wire. What a lovely sequence of darts that was. That would have been for back to back 12 darters. Yeah, just going to show that Victor does have a good streaky nature. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've seen, we did see glimpses of that Victor when he was here last time. Game shot on the four and he's 3 1 up and a former strong. Lakeside champion. This is going so far so good for the Belkin boy. Big leg, Victor to throw first. Game on. Averaging 94 at the minute to Mitchell's 81. Series 5 16. was very, very good for Sweden because they had Andreas Harrison. And Anton Ursland in the Champions Week. I just wonder how many Swedes could potentially make Champions Week in mid-February. 95. What a lo lovely throw he has. There's Harrison. He made the Champions Night as well by winning Group A in Champions 60. Week. Sweden have definitely left a big footprint in Portsmouth over the last three or four months. Well, it's, it's given the Scandinavian players a, a, an outlet, a massive opportunity. 95. We do have four countries represented here this week, predominantly by England. Seven players from England. We've got two Swedes, two Welsh players, 100. and the sole Scot, that is Andy Bolton. But you also have five players who have won a Moda Super Series week before. Yes, and I've not been for a few weeks, so I will say my congratulations to 100. Jim McEwen, the winner of Series 5. Wow. Where is the time going? Boy, did he play well. Yeah. 58. How many times do we see it where you lose to somebody in the group on a Saturday night and then you beat them in the final? But I clap my hands together and say well done to Marino Michaels because great to have him back. Yep. 100. So, congratulations to Alex Spellman, who beat Leonard Gates 99. in the, was the, it the Seacoast over in America at the weekend. Both featured here at the Super Series on multiple occasions. Yeah, he looked particularly happy with his trophy when he got it. <laughs> 51. That was a paperweight. Yeah, that's pretty much what it was. Very nice paperweight. There you go. This is to win his first match of the week. It's on. The bull. 99. What a wow. fabulous Scott effort that 60. was. Well, this is to stay in it. Will be a break back. Game shot on the fifth leg. Scott Mitchell. Two from ten on the doubles now. So when he goes for tops and tens, Six he legs, is Scott two hits from first. three Game attempts. On. Anywhere else, hasn't hit it. Now what's early? The sample size is not great. But 
we seem to think that when Mitchell leaves 100. tops or 10s, it works so far. And I'm going to keep an eye on this the whole week. Does Victor Tingstrom get another dart a double for the match? 100. That's the question in the air right now because he's been the better player. But these are the kind of games that Mitchell can just find a way. Yeah, he can grind one out. Also, congratulations 60. to Pompey's own Andy Jenkins, who, Andy Jenkins, who picked up a seniors title on Saturday. And Richard Hedrick Rowlands, who picked up a title 100. on Sunday. That's the final events on the seniors tour this year. And Andy Jenkins is now ranked number one. Isn't he? Is he? Yeah. On the list. He was talking at the weekend about how he's 100. never been ranked number one for anything. Never been world number one in the BDO or the PDC, anything like that. But he was a top 10 player in the PDC at one time. I think he got number six. Yeah, yeah. 100. It was when he made the semis of the world. Yeah, he was just in front of me. Not that he ever reminded me of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was going to be my next point. If Andy Jenkins is number one at something, prepare to be told. But I'm, I'm really happy for him. One out of Still playing some fabulous stuff. Yep. Mitchell is doing this, you know. This is typical Mitchell grinding. Ton, 60, 60. ton, 140, 101. 101 for 3-3. Three, three. And I would not be shocked to see him hit this. Why is he going 19s? Is it 42 tops? Got to be. I feel like I've lost my Scott Mitchell compass. 61. <laughs> Victor Car 141. Maybe he's just trying to mix it up. Well, I did think it was tractor tires because famously, of course, on the back of winning Lakeside, he, that's what he spent all the money on. He wanted a combine harvester, didn't he? <laughs> I think they're a little bit more than 100 grand, though. Double 10. Ah, he doesn't he miss that one. Six flags. So Stop it is 3-3. Three, three. Just giving Victor the tiniest little bit of hope. How much hope does he have? Going into leg seven. seven yeah, final last start in hand. First. Game in on. leg five and leg six, finding the double ten. And he's revved up for this. I know, he wants he wants to win one. 58. I, I don't remind him too often that when he sat next to me in the chair that, you know. And he has been spending quite a lot of time in the chair. Yeah, he has. And it'd, be it's it'd be interesting to 60. see if he feels any extra pressure when when you play now because it's it's got just sort of a it, there is a it's a bit of a difference 58 did you feel any pressure a year ago when you won your week uh, let's let because you did play on the monday did you feel any pressure yeah, in your the first monday, few games yeah the monday i was yeah i was rattling <laughs> 100 oh, right in the corner for that ton half a dart ahead Kingstrom needs to make headway here. That's an ideal start. And yet again, after the first start hits the 60, One out of them, finds himself another treble at least. Scott's just got to try and force an error out of Tingstrom. 60. That dart flight's got a little bit of everything, hasn't it? That Scott Mitchell one. It's got the dog. It's got a little bit of Union Jack on it. Still got the pink. 97. Not to go too full snooker on us, but man wearing the pink. I'll tell you what, six points today. I think you'd probably take that. Absolutely. 100. Victor Car 148. Advantage Sweden. Six darts from 148 to get his first two points, but... Let's not forget, he has missed the bullseye for a 1-2-4 to win this match by four legs to one. 60. No trouble there. Just makes the next shot a little harder because Mitchell will be on a finish when he comes back. How small will it be? Very intelligent. Victor Car 88. Now in two-dot territory, and the bullseye gives him 
something very gettable if Victor does not convert to little snowmen. It's the bull again. Didn't get it last time for the match. This time, takes a pause before he goes for it. 63. Same result right Shot on the wire. 91. Mitchell will be hoping to place his hand in the swag bag right now. It would be very ironic if he hits the ball for the match. It's going to be double 17. The rarely hit double 17. He didn't mean to hit that. But then again, on Saturday night, Nico Bloom didn't mean to hit double 16. Then he won the leg by hitting double 12. 57. Victor Carr, 25. I think he was put off by the fact that he wasn't going for the bull there. Agreed. Double eight. To finally get this done. And he does get it done. That was a workmanlike performance from the Swede. He was made to work very, very hard for those first two points of his week two campaign. But he was in command all the time, and he gives us a thumbs up there. There's the man from Sweden. Well done on your victor, on your victory there, Victor. I'll get my words out in a second, but that's how he did it. In seven legs, averaging high 87s, which isn't a bad game at all. We're going to get a first look at Nathan Treadgold from Wales when we come back. And he's going to be up against another Swede in Anton Usland. Welcome back. So victory for Victor Tingstrom before the break there against Scott Mitchell. Can Anton Ursland follow the Swedish success? A man who won a week in the previous series. Takes on a debutant in his opening match, Nathan Treadgold from Wales. He's making his debut after qualifying through the ADC route. And I caught up with him a little earlier this morning. Nathan, welcome to the Moda Super Series. Just tell us how you're feeling about being here today. 
Oh, I'm really happy to be here. You know, it's, it's great to make my TV debut. You know, something I've always wanted to do, and uh, hopefully it goes well. Yeah, it sounds exciting when you when you put it like that. Just tell mm. us a little bit more about your history in darts, what, what, how you got into darts in the first place and what you've done in the past. Um, well, I got into darts when I was in uni, just, you know, playing with the with my friends and everything up there. And when I come home, got uh, got a bit more serious playing county and stuff through that. And, uh, yeah, there's not much to say, really, on that front. Just said uh, the same as everyone else, I suppose. Uh, just tell us a little bit about how you qualified to get here for the Super Series. Uh, I qualified through, uh, through the vault, through the ADC, uh, when the Welsh qualifier in Series 2, um, up in Hollybush Rugby Club back back in Wales. And, uh, and yeah, and now I'm here. There's a, a few sort of well-known players in action this week, notably Scott Mitchell in your group, former world champion. Have you got any wins against high-profile players before? Um, I, I played some decent players in my time. You know, I, I played, um, I think I beat Richard Burnett, ex-world champion before. Um, I get Farron Sherrick, I've played in Q School. And uh, managed to get away with a win there as well. Um, but Scott, I know, know Scott from from County and stuff, so you know it's, it's nice to have someone here that I that I know. Oh. So that's nice. And what's the approach for you? Obviously, you're going to be here for five days, or you'd be hoping three, and then one on Saturday. Yeah, but hopefully. what's the approach for you? Five games a day. It's kind of different than a knockout style, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to take it the same as I would take any any game. Just you know, get up there, try and block everything out, and. Uh, and hopefully come away with a couple of results. You know, first I want to hit the treble 20, that's my first target, and then maybe a leg, and then we'll see how it goes from there. Perfect. Well, great to meet you, and good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Well, Nico, a nice level-headed attitude is always encouraging. Don't expect too much, and everything else is a, a bit of a bonus. Does play with Nick Kenny, I think Super League that is, isn't it? Back in Gwent. No doubt he's been picking Nick's brains. If he's anything like Nick Kenny, expect. Because Nick Kenny is a proper player. He's captained his country. But I think when it comes to this week, this man comes back for his third week here at the Motor Super Series. One of them was a Champions Week. But now I think we expect more from Anton than we did maybe before in the previous two weeks. Yeah, and that, that experience will be first. invaluable here this week. He's He's Game been on. there and done it, hasn't he? Now, before we get started, I got on my crate or my soapbox about Anton's nickname the last time he was here. And I flat out said I don't like it. And one out of bon ton. Nope, don't like it. Change it. Get something new. Simple as that. And he's got his first treble 20, so he can build on that. Because he was talking it... in his interview about, oh, I just want to hit my first treble 20. <laughs> going to be brilliant if it is start over the max. <laughs> I just love a Welsh accent in darts. It just... There's something so familiar and wonderful about it. You, you think about Richie Burnett and Leighton Rees and Martin Phillips and Mark Webster and all the, the great dart players that we've seen over the years. And Wales and darts go together like rhubarb and custard. 97. Absolutely. So I got off my high horse about the nickname very, very quickly. But what he 95. likes in nickname skills, he makes up for in technical skills. Because it is one wonderful throw that Anton Ustland has. He's got his first 180. And we've been looking at the stats of Nathan Treadgold from his qualifying through the amateur dart circuit. And they don't light up the Super Series tablets like a Christmas tree. But here's the thing about playing here. It's actually easier to play here than it is in some other venues because this is about as perfect as it gets. Yeah, it's, it's optimal lighting, yep. optimum board, optimal throw. Yeah, everything is, is perfect. The, the preparation area, the playing area.
Game shot on the first leg. Yeah, I'm going Anton about Offland. Mistakes being made by a chalker. Got a, one of the the greats in terms of Second referees up the there. First game it on. is the ideal surrounding. When you play things like Super League or any sort of local league, wherever you're from, the measurements on the hockey and the measurements of the board on the wall, they're all going to be the same because everybody does them the right way. But it's how it feels. It's visual perception. When you walk onto this stage, One out of forty. and I've heard players say it over the last couple of years, I wish I had a throw like this everywhere I go. And when it is this good, there's no excuses. Go 59. up there, you've got plenty of time to prepare in the back room for a couple of hours. And when you get on the stage, give us what you got. And that's why we get such good performances here in Portsmouth. Yeah, well, the, the people that put it together and the lighting and everything else, they're from a darting background. So they, they wanted it perfect. But we came down 100. and played on it prior to it just being finalized, didn't we? Yeah, I remember doing a couple of test matches with Mark Webster and Martin Adams. They were great fun. Did a test match with Corinne Hammond as well. We were just trying 25. to figure out all of the intricacies about the, the color of the stage and all of the things that might annoy a dart player, we ironed everything out. And funnily enough, 85. in this series, we've ironed something else out as well. We've got a yellow surround on the carpet as opposed to having a yellow carpet. Because if you look at our stage setting here, 57. dart players are not big fans of bright colors. They like things to be nice and mundane on the stage. Yeah, that, the yellow line is, is basically just to... Just to show you where that exclusion zone is. 100. Yeah, Willie Ball stepped Rukau, back the other day and actually stepped into somebody. So you are coming down to play here. Just be wary that you need to stand outside that zone until it's your turn. Danton's turn for the ball. 96. Nathan Ucar, 62. He's got his first maximum. Can he get his first double? By getting 62 the proper way. 45, 1, double, 8. He's a bit confused. Double, 8 it is. 54. Have to wait. And I've we're getting another look. 54. At double, 17. Two looks at double 17 in the first round of matches. This is unusual. Hard. Yeah. Rightly splitting. 20. Nathan Ucar, 8. There aren't many players who don't like double 4. Game shot on the Nathan second likes leg. it a lot Nathan because it's given him his first leg at the Motor Super Series. He's just... Ticking boxes, Nico, isn't it? Like Anton's his third first game on. his first max. Now he's got his first leg. Next on the agenda is to win his first match. Could be here. Yeah, I've just had a, a little look at the back of his shirt. He's got two initials on the back 97. of his collar that say K and T. I hope it's not somebody else's shirt. I'm sure it's got some sort of sentimental meaning. 58. There it is. K T. Based on what I've seen in a lot of dart shirts over the last couple of years, it might have something to do with relatives or children, maybe. 58. That's become a bit of a thing where high level dart players put their children's names on their dart shirts. Yep. I would just have on my dart shirt what was famously said by 43. Terry Bradshaw on Family Feud. None that I know of. <laughs> uh, Terry Bradshaw's a very famous Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback who won four 100. Super Bowl championships with the black and yellow back in the 70s. Very good broadcaster now. I wonder what kind of sports 
Nathan Treadgall's into, I'm rugby. sure it's going to be rugby. Maybe the silliest question when talking about a Welsh dart player. But we have a very busy week here at the Motor Super Series because we don't just have 100. week two of oh, yes. Series 6. We've got the ADC Women's Championship coming up on Saturday. And if you are wanting to be here for the week two finals... By getting your ticket for Saturday night to see the guys, you will also have admission for the girls on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, and it will be streamed on the Super Series YouTube channel. Yes, it will. 89. If you are watching there right now, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you click that bell and you'll get an alert every time we go live and add new content. 100. Antonio Carr, 57. As this game goes on, Nathan's average is just starting to come down. Anton's game is very much leg. steady around that 90 mark. This is not a bad game at all, three legs in. Fourth leg, Nathan but to it's all first. about the fact that game Anton off. is getting more shots at double and he is taking his opportunities. When he qualified for Champions Week in Series 5, Anton finished in fourth position 90. in Group A. And he ended up being second in Group C, but then winning the week. So it does go to show that you don't have to win your group to win 58. the week. You just have to make Saturday. Yeah, and I think being on debut, playing that full week is such an advantage. You learn so much in, in the first few days of Group A. And that's what he did. He just carried that experience 82. over into Group C. Ultimately, come to take the spoils. And he was here on Saturday night as well. Watching on. He's doing a bit of homework, maybe. I question whether he's actually been back to Sweden. Because he was here at the back end of Champions Week. He was here on the night when Jim McEwen won the title. 45. And then there's only a week between that and him being here on Saturday. So why would he go back to Sweden? I actually leveled the joke at Anton on Saturday that he must like Portsmouth that much that he doesn't want to go home. 100. Well, it ain't for the weather. <coughs> Amen to that. A horrible day here in Portsmouth today. Grey, rainy, miserable. And that's why we're all very happy to be inside watching this. That's why everybody loves darts this time of year. Because you want to go outside. You want to be in front of the fire with a nice can of soup. Big mug of tea and see who wins. That average of Nathan that I mentioned that has 60. been going down over Antonio the last couple of legs has continued to that effect. Yeah, well, we were looking at his, his averages, which, as you rightly said, you don't read too much into, but they're a big enough sample to sort of give us a, a what we expect in terms of level. But more often than not, again, I will echo what you said. 39. You will see Antonio players lift their 72. game because the environment is perfect. Once you just get used to the cameras and and the little bit of added pressure. 70. Nathan Carr, 142. Oh, well, at least you're on a double. Could have been back on 72. I think that was probably the right shot. Yeah, the right play for me. Ton is now forced to go for double one. 80. Considering he hit Antonio a single Carr 10 going two. for double six in his last attempt. He'll be nice and safe at the first one. Upright angle of attack, so he can use it as a marker. Yeah, one up, one in. That's perfect. No score. Use the wrong marker. 62. 
did have a shot at this earlier in the match. Missed double eight for it. But it's double 16 for 2-2. Two, two. It's double eight again. 54. Is that chances? Antonio Carr, two. Son's had three, three times the amount of darts at doubles so far in this match. No score. Nathan O'Carr, eight. But he may find himself at 2-2. Two, two. Hit it last time he went for it. Yeah, and he hits it once again, player. so he's Get already found a friend goal. on the stage. And their name is double four. Four legs played. Fifth leg and and to realistically, Game on. Ersland could have won this one already. He's had 14 darts at double and hit two. Red Gold's only had five darts at double 100. and hit two. I just get the feeling that Anton is very displeased with the way this one's materialized over the last five or six minutes. That last leg was a, was a 25 darter, and you don't like losing those. A bit smelly. Like that famous Swedish fish. Sustrumming. Is grim. Need a strong stomach for that. Fifty-eight. The way to settle the ship. When you have had a leg like that lost, is to have a leg just like this. Fifty-seven. Turn 140, get yourself on a finish as soon as you can and make sure that your opponent doesn't get a chance in leg number five. Yeah, you just want to win one clinically 85. and fuss free. He's been playing on the development tour this year, has Anton Usland as well. Finished the season 22nd in the averages. 83.22 for 13 games. He's better than that. Yeah, his his seasonal average, 84.57. 100. Antonio Carr, 84. Not too far away from there, but... He actually only played four tournaments in the development tour this year. He made the last 16 twice. It's double 11. Game and that's more clinical leg. for I'm a 3-2 lead. You know how I mentioned that it is darts Six weather and Nathan what you want is a kind of soup and a Game cup on. of tea and just to watch this. You could even be one ton soup. <laughs> See, that's what I mean about the nickname. It just, one it just hasn't got enough pizzazz. When you can liken your nickname to soup. got any ideas for a new nickname for Anton, by 57. all means get in touch with us on X, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Don't forget, you can actually post 95 on our YouTube channel as well. If you're watching on that, there is a chat window. We will keep an eye out for your opinions. 95. There will be a bit of a Swedish theme to this week, so today it's going to be get Ant on a new nickname, but that's it's coming from me. 39. Can't leave it finished from 349. I was talking on Saturday, Mace, about how young players are starting to figure out what number you need to leave in that range after six darts. 140. To still give you the chance of a 12 darter. It's got to be 350, 341, 344, 347, or 340. If it's any of the other numbers, 140. you're not going to leave a finish with a maximum. And in a leg like this, where your opponent is slightly ahead of you, that's where you've got to be careful. For sure. Which is why we both think the 17 isn't 
utilize anywhere near enough in that opening turn. Wow, it didn't go 20 ball. 37. Risky Antonio business, Nicole. Yeah, I'm going to keep my eye on that. I'm not sure about that play at all. He's not going to pay for that. This time. Avenue, but you've got to be super 59. careful doing that There's against people who have won weeks here. That might just cost you. It's double 16 for a level game. 34. This is a chance to finish Antonio it for Anton Ousland. For a 4-2 victory, which would mimic what Andy Bolton did in his first game. However, Bolton didn't have the darts. Anton does, so he's expected to win this one on the ball. 65. But he doesn't. There's Lucas, 16. That is a lovely marker. Well, can he sneak one in there? No score. Antonio Carr, 25. That actually made that double a bit bigger. If he could just find the right shot, he could have cushioned it in off one of two darts, but he might see the end of the game, ironically, on the double he's just missed. You'd have to make a similar type of adjustment. Game shot and Anton, Anton makes Oswald. the adjustment and gets the win 4 2. Well, the level of play dropped off due to that fourth leg that was 25 darts, but the end average is 81.55 for Anton. Nathan 78.23. Again, a lot of missed darts at doubles for the players. Four from 18, which mimicked Victor's finishing in our previous match. When we come back, Andy Bolton will be taking on Victor.
So three games down on Monday at the Modus Super Series. It's week two of Series 6, and this is what has happened so far. Andy Bolton, a 4-2 winner over Dom Taylor in a clash between two favourites in this group. Scott Mitchell going down to Victor Tindström, and it was double success for Sweden as Anton Ersland got the better of the debut at the ADC qualifier, Nathan Treadgold. Now, two of those winners are about to play each other, Tindström up against Bolton and guiding you through the action. It's Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. Many thanks, Murph. Victor Tingstrom will now take on the winner of match one from today. So one of these players is about to go to four points, starting their Group A campaign, ideally. I suppose you have to put Andy Bolton as favourite in this one because he played at a slightly different level to Victor Tingstrom in the first round of matches. But now that we've got those in the books... We can see what kind of start everybody else has had. And I suppose Andy is following the script because he is the favourite. Yeah, it looks like Andy Victor, if he was first. to pick up a win here, that would definitely Game pull on. up his pillow. And he is favourite, Bolton. Big favourite, 4 to 11, 2 to 1, Victor Tingstrom. And the, the level of play wasn't a million miles apart. What was a million 59. miles apart was the finishing. Because Andy Bolton averaged 94.88 and was 4 from 8, 50% on the doubles. But Victor 96. averaged a very respectable 87.67, missed 14 at a double. If you uh, eliminate half of them, their averages won't be what too far apart. 80. Second 180 of the day for Andy Bolton. Yeah, and Bolton will be buoyed by that performance 94. against Dom Taylor. A very good Dom Taylor himself averaged over 91 in that match. Do you see the winner of this group coming from Taylor or Bolton? Because I do. Yeah. And for me, the the top three in the betting are the the most likely. Bolton, the right right favourite for me. 100. But I wouldn't be shocked if if Mitchell got on a bit of a, a bit of a run. As we've seen when he's when he has played pro tours, he's still able and capable of playing at a, a high enough level. And one thing as well 100. is that we shouldn't discount the people who have lost in the first round of matches today because if you think to last week, Ivo Tricol, who finished on 26 points 95. for the first three days, Andy Ricard, lost his first two games of the week, but then ended up winning 13 in a row. That's double seven. Game that shot is double play. seven. Andy Bolton. There's a whole lot of juicy wiggling going along on a Monday morning. He's definitely woken up on the right side of the bed. Second leg victory. Yeah, he's, he's, Game he's got it about him today, hasn't he? He's, there's, there's certainly a... I wouldn't say urgency, but... He's obviously come into this feeling very confident. He's playing like someone who simply refuses to think about the fact that he will play on Thursday and Friday. He, yeah. I think that must be his motivation. The last time he did win a Group A campaign, 96. he actually did win the week as well. That was his winning week. So maybe that's the key to his success. I can't forecast him having the same sort of preparation on 99. a Thursday and Friday that Tebow had, which was Nothing. admittedly lacking, according to the Frenchman on Saturday night. And if my eyes don't deceive me, Tingstrom is doing a bit of an old school Humphreys here. You might have absolutely no clue what I'm talking about. 132. But look at the three points he's using. One of them's an odd one. Nice and plain. Nice and plain. One hundred. And your car one hundred and seventy. Probably wouldn't come out. That is a plausible excuse. If he can't get that point out, and it's that's why it's in there, or maybe it's a late replacement, mm -hmm. a late substitution for a snap point. Eighty four. Because wasn't that the, the issue with Luke Humphries? It he changed two when they came out all right, and then the other one wouldn't budge. Of course, there's always that risk of 
snapping the point, trying to get it out. 65. And you yeah, they could have sent miners into Luke Humphrey's dart and it wouldn't have come out. Oh, what a good dart that is. Over the top of that one for 2-0. 54. Went over the top, but just two. lost the line in the last third. Victor is in the madhouse. Game shot on the second Not for line. Long. Victor Tingstrom. He doesn't throw them in a, a particular order. We know that because the previous visit, visit the was the game on. too smooth. Then the patterned point. That time it was the pattern point first. So there's no psychological 100. effect. Eighty-five. Andy seems to be ticking all of the old school boxes these days with the way he plays the game and the way he prepares and the way he looks. Clean shaven. You don't see that much anymore. Look at all of the young dart players. It's like they've never seen a razor. It's starting to sound like Bobby George. First thing he says to most people when he meets them. One hundred. Have a shave. I bet Bobby shaves outside. Yeah, he's he's like Bill Duke from Predator. No form, just sweat. Sitting at the bottom of the garden. With a cut through. Yeah. 140, and you can 130. Another real strong leg. Randy Bolton, who, yet again, is averaging in the high hundreds. He's absolutely mustered on the trouble 18. For the average, and this is where he was against Dom Taylor at this stage in that match. 125, and who can 16? He's setting the standard. Yeah. Now he has covered that bet a little bit with that barrel. No score. Victor Ocar, 51. This is such a bonus, and it is for a breakthrough as well. Not many people saw this coming because Game Tingstrom takes the, the lead. Line. Victor Tingstrom. Yeah, this is certainly going against the, the run of play, isn't it? Four five Victor to the first. Four Game one. missed starts at a double. Should be 3 0 up here. I've got a, a somewhat deep question to ask you, Chris, because I'm fascinated by this current 58. generation of players that are coming through. And they all seem to have similarities about how they perform and the timings of everything they do. Why do you think young players do tend to play quicker these days? Why do they retrieve quicker? And why do they seem to do everything quicker? Well, I think 59. because of the success of those that do the same. Think back in Sort of the early 70s, the trend was to be very methodical and measured. 84. Now it's very much a game of muscle memory. Maybe because the players are playing more. Who was noted as a quick player back in the 80s? Richie Gardner? Yeah, well, he's, he'd still be rapid now, wouldn't he? He's not quite as quick as rapid Ricky Evans, but he's he's up there. 100. Yeah, quick players were not that common. Even Jockey Wilson was quick. 100. Most players were very methodical back then. They had definitive stopping points before they thrust the dart forward. You can see Andy is finding that little hot zone in front of his right eye, and then it's 60. back and through, Richard whereas yeah. that he'll be stopping sighting. point has be almost been eliminated yeah. by a lot of players. He'll be sighting the dart. Where Tingstrom's very much a, 94. a thrower and rather than a aimer. He also does something called laying off, which is where the hand actually skews to his right ever so slightly. It's the same as 85. a golf swing where the club actually lays off away from the player. I think see it comes back and he lays it away from his eye line. A la Jim Furyk. Being shot on the fourth leg. Victor Tingstrom. 3-1 Tingstrom. Who saw this? Let's I go. didn't. 
going along very nicely. Only 0.2 Look between like the averages, the and these averages are very, very healthy. Yeah, as they were in Bolton's opening game. I remember rightly when Tingstrom was here in a weekly campaign in Series 5. 122. Did have a few games where it took him a little bit of time to get going, but when he did put in a performance, it 85. was usually in the middle of the day. Correct. I suppose you can classify this as the middle portion of the day in rounds two, three, and four. 100. We tend to see the, the best from the players in matches two, three, and four, or cycles two, three, and four. 100. A Paul Hinks is our referee this week. The legend in our midst. Tends to pronounce the names of European 60. dog players better than anybody. Bit of a shame that Patrick isn't here this week. 140. I think Bolton's going to need a 140 here. He's only had one in this game. It's a bit of a surprise. It's been a lot of tons. And maybe for that reason, 97. He is two legs behind, even though he's had three more darts at double. And his Swedish opponent, who is bearing down and on a match dart. Taking this out already. He's found the treble 18 again. Oh. Would have been some saver. That might be that. They have the best performance of the day so far. Double Eight nine is found for a 4-1 victory. And Victor Tingstrom has just sent a message to everybody in Group A, including the favourite Andy Bolton, who loses that by three legs. He doesn't smile into the camera this time like he did in game one because he was probably a bit more focused. Look at those numbers. 67% on the checkouts and over 98 the average. I think Tingstrom is very much on our radar now, courtesy of that fourth match of the day. Nathan Treadgold hasn't had much time between his first game and second. He comes next and he's up against Dom the Tower Taylor.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we are in to the fifth game of today in a meeting between the debutant Nathan Treadgold and a man who's very familiar with that stage in Dom Taylor, a finalist on the week he played in in the previous series, having made the group stages on finals night and a semi-final before that, so he's on the correct trajectory. Will this week be his week? We will find out over the course of it. He takes on Tread Gold in this next game. Both players looking for their first victory and guiding you through it. It's back to Mace and the asset. Thank you very much, Murph. Yes, the favourite for this one is Dom Taylor. Two to five, seven to four about Nathan, but... well. Victor in the last one was a, a two to one dog and produced one of his best ever performances here at the Super Series. But I think Dom won't be too disheartened because he did play very well against a very, very good Andy Bolton in his opening match. I expect him to win this one, Nico, and win it fairly comfortably. Yeah, I think that's fair to say it. He was classy in his first like game, Nathan but first. he just ran into a very effective X Factor. Game on. He doesn't have the darts this time, but that didn't stop Andy beating him in game one. Nathan might have to tread carefully here. Forty-five Probably isn't going to be the last time I say <laughs> that this week. But he'd like to do what Goldfinger did back in March. He won the UK Open and... Nathan, if he was to beat Don Taylor here, he would pull off the upset. Back in the day, 50. these two would would have known each other very well because traditionally there were so many tournaments in and around the Bristol area and in and around the Cumbran area. One hundred and eighty. That I would see pretty much the entire Welsh international squad of a weekend in pretty much all the Knockouts 59. that took place back then. There was there was always something on. Taking on the Riddlers. What was the banter like when they were doing that? Just One out, out of curiosity. 40. Well, there was no... There, there was very little of this quite tribal thing we have now with the, with the Welsh and the English and obviously the Scottish 100. as well. Nathan Football and rugby and things like that. It was all... It was all very friendly. I didn't really ever hear any anything. I remember when I first started playing professional darts and there used to be a little bit of banter between some of the very English players and the very Welsh players. And there were a couple who shall remain nameless were singing across the room to the Welsh guys, you could have been born in Bristol. 100. <laughs> Nathan Carr, 78. I've never forgotten that. It was it was all taken in the right yeah, way. It's, of it's all gone full circle. Back in the the seventies and eighties, of course, the thirty eight. The dislike between Eric and Alan Evans was was well known. But the thing is, all back in the the seventies, all the Welsh players played their county darts in Bristol because eighty one. Nathan there wasn't 40. a side back then that they could have played in. Nathan's on tops after 15, Each and that's a very side. good Nathan's leg. Goal. Oh, we're about to see another shock. Hmm. I want to reiterate that price no. for Nathan Treadgold <laughs> again. Second leg, Dom to throw first. Game on. It was 7-4. to four. Dom Taylor was the 2-5 to five favourite. Well, that was a lovely leg, a 180 in there, 16 darter. Clinical on tops. And Nathan was telling us a little bit earlier on in his interview how he qualified to get here and you might think to yourself I can do that well you might want to get yourself registered with the amateur dart circuit because that's how he's here and just to give you an insight into some other players that you might see sometime soon I was very happy to see that my good friend Adrian Gray has yes. qualified to come back 60. to the Super Series so well done Adrian and Jack Mail from Newcastle has qualified uh, I believe he beat Kevin McDyne in a regional final, so young Jack's going to get himself up here, and he's a, he's a rather good talent. Amateur dart circuit, put that into your chosen search engine and have a little gander at what they're doing, and you might be able to find some
bolt tournaments near you because they're pretty much everywhere at the minute. Yeah, and get yourself registered on Darts Atlas. What are the Plenty of information there from all the events that have taken place and are on the calendar. I was questioning his counting a little bit earlier today because he made a somewhat 50, well, no, actually, no, it was a 40 60 call on a certain shot, but on 271, he got that right. It might just be 19s again for him when he comes back. If he gets two trebles again, he'll have double 12 for a 2 0 advantage. Yeah, car 138. There's one of them. Give it a good chance. Left himself on 62 again, which he left himself on 86. twice in his previous match. Don Nicar, 145. Don Taylor. In a spot of bother here. Does he do that a little too much? 59. Nathan Ucar, Show 52. a little bit less disgust because your opponent will see that. And will feed on it. Take Game confidence. On the second leg. Nathan Treadgold. Of your disappointment. Oh, this is really good, isn't like it? Nathan to throw first. Game on. 100. 16 data, 14 data. Two out of two on doubles. And this is so much better than we saw in round one. 39. Well, we already have a question mark here in game two for him. Can he maintain this throughout the match? Because we did see in his first game his average continually deplete. Well, he ended up with an average some 13 points below that of what Dom Taylor produced. 100. And you were right. It started off in the 90s and then progressively dipped. He does that here against Dom Taylor. Could find that lead. 140. Being swallowed up. Draw already looks a little smoother than it was at pretty much any point in his first match. That's bad news, not yeah. just for Dom Taylor, but also for Andy Bolton in Game 59. 7. Yeah, and this, of course, will be Nathan's first game under the lights. It's a completely new experience, so I suppose you can give him a pass out for that opening game performance. One out of them, It might just be a time of year where shocks are... Very, very common. And I, for one, hand on heart, didn't give store bunts a chance <laughs> at the Grand, the Grand Slam. Uh, not he, at all. No, you you were not alone. And what has he gone and done? He's qualified in two games and he's got one to spare. So very well done to store bunts the last couple of days. What, what's been a, And against two players playing very well right now. 100. Just a smidge. But I think it's really interesting that at the Grand Slam of Darts over the last couple of days, the most 180s hit by any player in their first two games was Bull Greaves. One out of Five in her opening match. And then three in her second match. Over, that was a great win over another player in fine form in Petretzko. Game shot. And this is 3 0 to Tretzko, and he's averaging 102. Well, I can't find any numbers, Nico, anywhere of him Fourth leg jump to throw first. having a ha an average Game of on. in excess of 102. Me either. He must be enjoying this experience. Probably thinking to himself, he's going okay. Dom, Ta seems... Dom Taylor is not enjoying this at all. No. 59. No, his Monday couldn't have got off to a worse start. I know there's one more game to go in this round of matches, but we have this thing called a live table. 59. And at the minute, you've got Andy Bolton, Scott Mitchell, and Dom Taylor in the bottom three. And I know it's early, but it, it illustrates that maybe we've been a bit too keen to focus on the favourites. 
Bedgold, Ursland, and Tingstrom currently occupy the top three spots, and they're all from either ADC Europe or ADC Domestic here in the UK. 100. Well, that tells me the ADC's working. I think it might be. And it's collaboration with the Super Series. Well, it has had a very big footprint here in 2023, and nobody deserves more credit for that from a playing sense than Adam Mould, and you will see him in Group C this week, alongside Adam Lipscomb and Jamie Kelling. Fifty-eight. Not a bad time yet to get some form. If you've got challenges coming up, I wonder what Dom Taylor's going to be doing between now and January. He's not going to be playing at a sixty-four a Lakeside or an Ali Pally, so it may just be a case of getting ready for a Q School challenge in January to get himself. On the tour, which obviously Donna he's Darwin comfortable with because he's played some pro tour stuff this year with great effect. But if he doesn't, would welcome him here with open arms. Great second dart. He's got 76 left. Same target. And found as well. But this is a match-winning opportunity. And I hasten to say, if he hits this 144, this will be the performance of his life. Twenty-nine. Car 16. Fair to say he did not worry that one at any point. It was this double that cost Dom Taylor a shot at a final on the Pro Tour very recently. He missed a 1 3 6 checkout against Ross Smith in Players' Championship 28. No score. Nathan O'Carr won. Somewhat ironic 15. double gilding there with two thumbs up. This is a lot easier than 144. Doesn't get a shot at a double, so this time Taylor 99. must take it because Dom Nathan's Yorker on 16. the same double, awaiting any possibly chances or possible chances that come his way. Does he get one? Eight. He does. This has turned out to be a nightmare Nathan for Yorker Dom Taylor. 16. Six starts at double, no hits. Nathan has had three darts at double and hit them all. Game shot oh, make that Nathan four from goal. five. It's still world class on the outer ring. And look at how much that means to him. That's his first win at the Motor Super Series. And it is to nil against one of the favorites for the week. 93.94 the average as well, which is even 16 darters. That may just be the best game that he's ever played. And considering where he's done it, he will feel very, very good about himself as he goes into his third match a little bit later against Andy Bolton. It is the end of round two after this next game. And Anton Ersland is about to take on Scotty Dog.
So Scott Mitchell ready for his second game here on Monday morning at Modus. He was in the comms box last week. He's on the stage today looking for his first victory. He takes on the former weekly winner at Champions Week in the last series, Anton wanton Ursland. Scotty Dog has the darts in this one and talking you through the darts, it's Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Thank you, Chris. And, well, even though this is very, very early, I think if you lose your your opening couple of games, it's going to naturally put you a bit on the back foot, Nicol. Yeah, just a little bit, but we'll see what happens at the end of this one. But I'm already in a bit of a tiz about what's happening here in Group A. We've seen Dom Taylor lose his first two matches. One of them wasn't that much of a surprise. The other one, categorically a surprise. And we had this as part of our bet builder at the start of the show. And I didn't agree with first a lot of people Scott out there who thought first. that Anton Usland would beat Scott Mitchell, Game but on. I didn't think that Andy Bolton would lose to Tingstrom, and I didn't think Treadgold would beat Taylor. So round two is like the twilight zone. Well, if Scott's going to be vulnerable, you would, you would think it would have been in that opening game where he just didn't didn't settle quick enough. Well, we both, the, the reason we both disagreed with the, the public's pick is they are an accumulation of the most popular bets on the exchanges. Because we know that Scott has got a game under his belt. 45. We'd, we'd expect him to up his levels. Where do you think Scott Mitchell's career is at right now? 137. What do you think his ambitions will be over the next few months? Where does he want to be next year? Well, because of his, because of his commitment to the farm, I'm not quite sure that the restructuring of the Pro Tour will suit him. I think he has the options of the Senior events. This. Maybe play a, a bit of challenge tour and maybe play the odd pro tour when it suits if he gets a cool up. 56. He doesn't even Antonio make Carl, European tour events if he's got a tour card. He's, he's better off staying off the tour to try and get on the European tour. Yep. Hold your horses. Hold everything. 131. Oh, it's playing Scott Mitchell. Scott I should have 40. said, hold your cows. He does have some horses. Does he? Oh, I'll just refer to my the, previous statement then. The he, he has Scott an Mitchell. array of a bit of menagerie. Yeah, he's got goats and. Second leg hands on the throw first. Game on. Cows, horses. And if he's a farmer. He's got a tweed jacket as well. Of course. All part and parcel of being a farmer. Especially this time of year. And I'm sure he's got an array of flat caps as well. Can't beat a bit of winter tweed. Seen him in a tuxedo as well. When he was winning an award for his farm. One of the... I think it's probably the best picture I've ever seen of Scott, actually. He looks so happy 100. with that award. As the old... The whole Mitchell clan were when were picking up that award. 121. I'm very grateful for the farmers that put food on our table and look after our countryside. They do such an incredible job. And some of the videos that he's posted on his social media over the last few years, doing things at 3, 4 100. in the morning. I'd rather he was doing that than me, but what a job it is. Sometimes a thankless task. Yeah, not very rewarding nowadays. But can you imagine doing a full day in the farm and then still having to play a semi-pro darts career as well to this kind of level? He probably doesn't even know what tired is. Because tired to him is normal. 140. Antonio Carr, 148. Couldn't get a 145 in the first leg. Not going to get the 148. Started with a 4-2 win over Nathan Treadgold today did Anton. And that's already looking Got a little bit better because of what Nathan's done in round two. 
for sure. Fifty-nine. All right, Lee going for the ball. Sixty. The potential to leave a two-dart finish. Such a lovely single. Fifty. Double ten Johnny does not Carl get him out of jail. Gonna go bullseye here. On for the smaller 62. target. Antonio Car ten. On eighty two with two darts. Questionable. Especially when so far he's had far more success on tops. Game show that one's in for one away. one. Antonio it could Oakland. have been a lot worse than what it is, but I was talking about trends with young players like also seeing something first. else Game on. over the last few weeks as well even when young players are winning legs they're snatching their darts out the board and I don't want to get back on my soapbox again but look at what happened to Callum Rids on the Pro Tour when he snatched his darts out yes. the board he snapped a point don't grasp them out of the board 99 because you run the risk of damaging your equipment. You're not going to see Scott do that. He'll take them out methodically, like he delivers them. What's this? 125. One, two, three. Lovely and respectful. And that's, that was, he was working with a sports psychologist, and that whole pace 54. to the board, the way they retrieved, the pace walking back. That was all something that was done to, to pre-program the brain. Yeah, it's neuro-linguistic programming. Very interesting stuff. 43. Oh, he gets all three that time. Bucks the trend. You tend to do that when they're quite tightly compacted. 100. Scott Car 153. I was always told by my father that I had to take them out one at a time just because it made the board last longer. <laughs> I think he was telling me porky pies. I think he might have been. 60. I think Two. he was teaching me a lesson in respect, actually. Two visits to the board without a trouble has just left him myself a little vulnerable. Not now. 81. Scott Lucar, 93. Two possible routes here. 19s or the bull, but with Anton on 167, the right one here is definitely the 19s. Saying to himself, why is that so far away? 42, 32. Aha, the 32 the works this time. I just done an accidental partridge there. <laughs> Aha! Slow play on to third first. Game on. I think a really good level today is Scott Mitchell. Now, I know that he only averaged 81 in his first game, but there were encouraging signs in that game that if he was just to iron things out a little bit, maybe he could... Perform at a level. Well, it was the double, dub, well, the lack of doubling was his undoing, wasn't it? He, he missed 11 at a double. 100. Sixty. There's another element to these darts that he's changed to as well. He has. A little bit of a micro scallop in the second third as well. One I just 40. wonder if that's where he puts his middle finger. Well, that it's placed there, and but then when the dart's retrieved, I think it just comes off. So I, I make you right. I think again, it's all about positioning in the hand. One hundred and forty. But the level I said he's still capable of playing at is. Well, it's an example of it here. He's averaging 102.18. And we're well into the fourth leg. 
That's the fourth max. He's not noted as a big 180 hitter, but when someone has got four 180s in a game that hasn't even completed four legs. 60. Scott Lucar, 81. He's actually in record territory here because the most 180s hit by a single player in a single match in Motor Super Series history is seven. But he might run out of legs because he's playing so well. 69. Anton Lucar, 141. Had a shot at a 148 and a 145. Now 141 doesn't work either. 109. Scott Lucar, 12. Great approach play from Anton. Everybody likes double six. Game Told shot the four flags. 3 1 Mitchell. Mitchell. And this one is going the way that I thought it would. I somewhat booked. The trend of the Scott to throw first. people having Game a punt one. out there, and actually, one of our backroom staff who was pretty confident that Anton would beat Scott today, and I said, "No, uh, I fancied Mitchell for this one." I think Six you would eight. agree with me there, uh, uh, Miss. I did, mate. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't really make a case, even even on the back of that performance in his opening match. Uh, I just, again, you. 97. When you work with a, a, a player who's still active, you tend to just track their progress and performance levels. You look into the career of Mitchell as well. 43. He's had some big averages in his career. But not necessarily recently. His biggest recorded average in his career was... In an England shirt, 41. playing Ryan Hogarth in an international in 2019. He went over 111 in a 4-0 victory over someone who actually lost in a ranking final at the weekend against Shane McGurk, who won the Irish Open on Saturday. I know, I know he's going to be very, very proud of that yeah, achievement. Yeah, congratulations, Shane. It was over in Killarney, wasn't it? It was the, the Dart Festival. Indeed. And congratulations to Kai Fan Leung, who won the Irish Classic yesterday. Yeah, another friend of the Super Series. 93. Eileen de Graaf winning a, a ladies' event as well. You can see that grip where he's towards the back of the barrel, but the middle finger is towards the middle. 60. And it, it's taken off, isn't it, as soon as he gets to the back of the backswing. He's almost fanning that hand out. Yes. So he... He makes it easier to let the dart go, whereas Anton's hand, you can see it's closed 60. the whole time. Each and every grip that you see here, I guarantee you, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being like you're strangling it, 0 being like you're letting it go, 140. everything is more towards the 0 than the 10. This has been a number Shot that has followed people around this year, including the World Grand Prix champion, Luke Humphreys. A wonderful 138 that was. The clinch it. 100. Anton Mitchell's Yukawa, left himself a double 19. And Anton is constantly left in this zone when Mitchell is on something easier. That is very, very good try. He's already sweating it up on the stage. And I guarantee you that's not to do with heat. That's to do with pressure. 126. Scott Lucar, 38. A great shot. But it may be a bridge too far for Anton. He's got plenty of height to go over the top of that. He's well over six foot tall. Game. And he has got himself the first win of Group A. A very good performance from Mitchell. The average came down in the end by a good five or six points. But ultimately, it's a very tidy display to get himself on the board. And after two rounds of play, courtesy of that three-leg victory,
He is now in second position with a leg difference of plus two and two points on the board. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, it will be the start of round three. Welcome back to Monday at the Modus Super Series, week two of Series 6 underway and six matches completed. And Andy Bolton winning that first one against Dom Taylor, who's lost both of his games so far. But Victor Tingstrom has won his first two fixtures. Anton Ersland also getting a victory, as has Nathan Treadgold and Scott Mitchell. As you can see, none of the three favourites have won both of their first two games. And that means that the group looks like this. Tingstrom at the top... The only one to have won both of his fixtures so far. Dom Taylor, the only player to have lost both of his games so far and yet to get off the mark. Coming next, someone will join Tingstrom on four points. Will it be the ADC qualifier or will it be the X Factor? Let's find out in the company of Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. Yeah, let's find out. And it's an interesting game at the start of round three, Murph, because... I suppose the biggest question in the air right now is, can Nathan keep it going? What he did in round two, in Looks beating like Dom Taylor by four legs to nil, was a big surprise Game on. for the ADC right, qualifier. Yeah, and the manner in which he, he did it. One of the best performances of the day. In fact, only one person, in fact, two people have out-averaged Nathan's efforts in round two. One was Andy in round one, the other being Victor Tingstrom, who beat Andy by four legs to one, averaging 98.18. 100. We have seen a very good standard so far today, but will it continue for these guys here in the middle match of their campaign on Monday? 100. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's can he replicate that performance? We know Andy Bolton can sort of hold those kind of numbers he's produced today, all day, 94. every day, and twice on a Sunday. Here's the thing about the Motor Super Series for me. You can be a really good player. 100. 
trying to qualify for this, or you may have been a really good knockout-style player in your career, but this is a marathon. You are going to play another game. 132. After two rounds. Uh, yeah, and you've got to deal with those peaks and troughs of where you're, you're naturally going to just have a game where nothing works. And in a knockout tournament, if you're defeated, you leave. In this environment, you have to deal with loss and still play again. And going back into the player's room with your tail between your legs. And maybe 96. having to take and a few mental jabs as well from certain players who are very well seasoned in kicking you when you're down. We'll say one thing, that practice room is very quiet today compared 44. to Saturday. Yes, there's, there's very little banter going on in there. Yeah, Nico Bloom and Willie Borland were very vocal on Saturday night and they had every right to feel that way because they both made the Game final. The first and it continues Nathan for Treadgold. Nathan Treadgold because he's got a 15 darter there and that's the kind of standard he was bringing at the start of his second round Something match. Something like Nathan to throw first. Game on. I say this, there's no real evidence from his qualification. 100. See, we've seen a lot of averages in the 70s and 80s, early 80s from him. So his level of play in match two for him. 85. And he's continued it on so far here. Well, stick with me on this one, because I have, have a theory. Why do professional golfers always seem to put well and always seem to hit incredible shots off fairways on tour? Because the fairways are perfect. The greens are perfect. Yeah. If they were playing at the local <laughs> hack and hack, yeah. the pitch and putt, they'd be trying to read a putt with, you know, <laughs> divots in the middle. We give them the perfect fairway, the perfect green, and now all of a sudden you've got someone who was playing One well because the conditions are premium. Well, I did play golf last Monday. Nico, you would have been proud of me. I had a couple of hole-in-ones. 69. Nathan Carl, um, 127. Yeah, I played very well. Won by about 11 shots. Cra this is a computer game. No, crazy golf is something else in Nottingham, I can assure you. 102. No, aggressive play, wasn't it? Turned down. One hundred and eighty. Shot earlier. This time he goes for the ball. Reactive player. Game shot on the second leg. This is Nathan stunning. Treadgold. Fifteen, followed by a fourteen. Two 0 Someone's going to wake Nathan Treadgold up in a minute. <laughs> Third leg, Andy to throw first. Game on. Qualifiers have come through the door and made name names for themselves, but doing it against the two fancied players in Group A, this so far today is yourself. Dream Street for the man from Wales. But is it just more evidence that there are other players from that part of the world that we just know nothing about? And the way to find them is through the ADC and through the Motor Super Series. Yeah, well, something like this 95. wasn't really there before was it where you can really unearth an untapped pool of players well, what i will say is that if the super series was around 10 years ago we would have found getaway price well look how many players went to that champions of champions 82 and have then gone on ryan Searle, johnny clayton gezi price jim williams paul hogan all great players who have won that tournament. Alex Small from Wales has been nice here and made a final. The job isn't done yet, though. Expect resistance. 85. From the man from Scotland. The sole dart player from Scotland here this week. But we only needed one Scottish dart player to win the title in Champions Week, and that was Jim McEwen. And... No pressure, Andy, but the last two weeks have been won by Scottish players. 43. Yes, that's right. But in fair, I mean, we're talking about areas that have created 
pools of players, of course, originally Andy Bolton from Stoke and used to practice a lot with Ian White, 43. Bill Taylor, Andy Mark Ogawa, Frost, Andy Hamilton. There really was a such a solid group of players at that time in and around Stoke on Trent. And of course, all fronted by the GOAT, the Governor, 95. Bill Taylor. Got an interesting question to ask you in the next leg. You'll probably find some interest in it. If I know the answer. You you've got the answer to everything. Twenty six. And you like a darting bibliography. Maybe the twenties for Andy on this one. Two singles for double sixteen. Wasn't even entertaining the treble. 40. Yeah, I don't I don't mind that play sometimes. Yeah, because if you go for the 16, you miss double six inside, you could miss double three inside and leave yourself on three. Just good board management. Eighty-one. Now he's coming and back for 32, 32 instead of something very small. Leaving yourself on primary doubles is something that we don't talk enough about. And that is a beautiful angle to Andy see Bolton. how we got that double eight. It is now 2-1. Nathan Treadgold. Now, yeah. my, my question to you is this. Both like Nathan to throw first. Game on. Not even that long ago, we were still talking about how Stoke had such a huge footprint in darts. Andy Hamilton, Ian White, Adrian Lewis, Phil Taylor, and others. Yeah. 42. Where is Stoke now compared to the likes of St. Helens in England? And maybe some other parts of the UK which have maybe trumped that part of Staffordshire. Well, well, I, I think we're seeing the effects of... 140. We don't really have pubs anymore. You know, they're, they're either being turned into wine bars or restaurants. Um, league darts is on the decline, as is county darts and that kind of thing. And it's possibly starting to be replaced. thirty-four. Buy things like the ADC and singles. Where, where we are in Ilkeston, singles leagues dominate everything. Monday nights, Tuesday nights, and Wednesday nights are singles leagues and Thursday nights, I think. 100. Yeah, I think if you look around the world as well, New Zealand, Australia, definitely Canada and the United States. It's very much dart clubs now. Yeah. And I, and I, think, I think we're going to have to wait a while before the, the, the cycle start to churn more more players out. Of course, we've got the wonderful JDC and all the other, all the academies around the country. And we, we, well, see, we've seen players come through that in Bo Greaves and Luke Littler, Thomas Banks. Um, they're all products of that JDC system. Is it different in Wales? Do they still have the... The working men's clubs and the pubs and the rugby clubs involved with team darts. I think they probably do a little bit more. Bullseye for Andy. Game oh, show the you beauty. Andy yeah, Bolton. I think, I, again, I think it's going to take a take a while for it to sort of go full circle. If like Andy to throw first. Because. Game on. If, if you, if 20 years ago, you wouldn't have sort of, pushed your kids into thinking what well, being a professional dart player is actually a, a job with huge financial opportunities. 58. Where now that that's there, isn't it? It's it's now a, a genuine opportunity to earn life life changing money. And I think that is a lot to do with what some of the young players have done over the last few years. They've looked at the Humphreys, the Vandenbergs the Littlers, they've seen the amount of money that they're earning and the parents' attitudes have changed. Yeah. 100. Absolutely. I've seen it firsthand recently with people asking for advice. What does my young dart-playing son or daughter do next? Following the footsteps of 96. Luke Humphreys, who's done, in my opinion, everything perfectly. Correct. And even when he's made mistakes, he's acknowledged them and put them right. Yep. 119. This game is changing. Courtesy of that 121, he 
landlocked that bullseye. Is that a guitar I see? Hmm. It's a V guitar as well. It's extra cool. Our friend Dan Dunder right. would love that, wouldn't he? They were the coolest things possible when I was a kid. <laughs> you, you could either have a V guitar or a Z guitar, and you think, it's got to be cool to have one of those. No, you're going to have to tell me what they are. A Z guitar is what the lead singer of Metallica would use. Oh, right, okay. It's uh, shaped like a Z. The V guitar's where well, it's got that cutting out of the the main board of it, and it looks like a V upturned. Oh, so it's a real guitar, then? 46. I knew a car 84. Yeah, it's a style of guitar as opposed to a brand. Three days of school date. That was a misspent youth of parents that would watch the likes of Gary Moore, Phil Linnett, and everything that was on the tube. Do you remember that? I do. Paula Yates and Jules Holland. 44. Nowadays, the tube is something different. <laughs> you have to get on it or watch it. And if you are watching on the YouTube, we welcome you. And There's a bit of a Gavin and Stacey joke for you. Very apt, considering Nathan's from South Wales. Shot but he is 3-2 like down. Andy Bolton. Yeah, this has been a fabulous turnaround from Andy Bolton, and he's only asking the question Just now like of Nathan. Nathan. To throw first. Game on. Averages almost identical. 90.67. 90.49 for Nathan. I wasn't sure what we were going to get from Nathan here today, but he has exceeded my expectations. So whenever somebody does that, 85. I am happy to say that I was wrong about what we could potentially get. He is more threatening than I thought he would be. Uh, we both thought that it could be a fairly one-sided One group between the top three and the next three. One hundred and thirty-two. We're hearing that he was a, a guitar champion. A guitar champion? Oh, I, it's a new one on me. One hundred and one. Was that on a computer game? Because you can measure that on Guitar Hero. Oh, all oh, right. One hundred. Maybe an air guitar champion. Because you can be a champion at that. We're going to have to ask him the question. We've got to get a guitar in, haven't we? 100. What's he going to lead from 184? 100, well, 96. 134 would have been really good there to lead 50. Still in a good spot. Unless... Bolton can produce a banger. One hundred. This Nathan is a Ducan big exchange. If Bolton gets a shot at sixty, that might be that. But if Treadgold can find this eighty-eight, him with the chance of winning the game by him not doing what, what he had to do. Andy it's all up to Andy for four straight legs. And a second win of the day to put right what happened in round number two. 20. Not Nathan close enough. No, I didn't scare it. A bit tentative. See, he's just shaking the arm out. Seems to be feeling the heat as well. Is double sixteen for Nathan? Is that a blocker? It has to be, considering how he's behaving right now. Just laying across the the double, isn't it? He may have to go. He may have to go left and go on the high side. Well, he's gone right. Game and it was the right choice. Flag. What Nathan a dart that is! Feisty. It's the 41, and we go the distance again. Seventh and final, like Andy to throw first. Game on. Last time we went the distance, 
It was game two. Victor Tingstrom beat Scott Mitchell. That's the first little bit of 100. celebrating we've heard this week. I wonder how that's going to be greeted by Andy, who's a bit old school. Maybe the next Gervin Price. Oh, well, did he play? That 110 average the other day. Yeah, that was his highest yeah. televised av uh, average in a, in a ranking stage game. No, I know he's had a 1-1-7 at the World Cup against Martin Schindler, but I was surprised to see that. It goes to show that even with that Hall of Fame-style CV, some people 100. and their ceiling of performance has not gone as high as people think. Did you um, did you see one of the platforms on Facebook put out there? One hundred all-time top ten. Did you take a gander at that? I did. Well, what was your uh, opinion on it? I thought some of those names shouldn't have been in that top ten. No. Forty-three. Glad there was no James Wade in there. No Peter Wright. No Adrian Lewis. No Peter Wright. Yeah, he's only won two World Championships, two European Championships. 60. A match, oh, a match one of player. The, one of the most dominant match plays. I've two ever World seen. Cups. Second most successful person in the history of the European Tour. And yeah. Yeah, he's not a top 10 player at all, is he? Absolute lunacy. Yeah, there 54. was. 54. Andy Ocar, 144. Well, maybe, maybe at some point this week we'll, we'll put a. A little divide up, and we'll put down our our top tens and put them side by side. I like that idea. Sixty. Nathan Carr, one hundred and sixty-four. Never mind top ten. Nathan hits this. This would be the best finish of his life. The top trumps. And he had been good on the trouble nineteens, hasn't he? Hasn't he just trouble sixteen or trouble twenty? 96, Andy Ocar, 84. Well, Andy's just got to make sure at least here are getting a dart at the ball. He trouble 20, double 12. He'd love a shot at either double 12 or double 11. But it is the ball. 59. Lion was Andy good. Andy 68. Too much adrenaline for another big win and a, to defy the odds again. That's okay. He's going to leave double 18 to beat Bolton to add to his win over Dom Taylor. Game wow. Match, Nathan Treadgold. Big, big win for Nathan Treadgold. And earlier on today, I said that certain people might be happy with six points when Monday is completed. Andy Bolton was not part of that. He can only get six points now if he wins his last two matches. Nathan Treadgold could even get more than that. He's just beaten the favourite for the week by four legs to three with 67% on the doubles. And when we come back, it will be an all-Swedish affair. We're going to let loose the ABBA jokes and more after this.
Welcome back to the Moto Super Series where Victor Tingstrom has won both of his opening matches here in Group A on Monday. A little bit of a, a turn up for the books when you consider the three strong favourites of the group were Dom Taylor, Andy Bolton and Scott Mitchell. Well, Andy Bolton has just been beaten by Nathan Treadgold. Mitchell did get the better of Anton Ursland in a match earlier on. Ursland beat Treadgold with his only victory so far today. But now it's the all Swedish encounter of this group. And talking you through the action is Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. Thank you very much, Murph. No ABBA jokes. I am shocked. Probably saving them for later in the week, Mace. Well, the winner will take it all in this one. It is the middle of the match of the day. And don't be surprised if we get a hug right here because when Tingstrom was playing against Lukasiak in Group A the last time he was here. There was a like lovely hug at the start first. of proceedings. Game on. Oh, isn't it lovely? Look at all do with a hug now and again, especially on a cold, wet winter's day like this. But only one can take the points here. It's been very good from Victor so far today. He could 100. even find himself undefeated on six points at the end of this one. And keep Ursland at two. One hundred and forty. It's a shame he's not playing someone called Fernando. <laughs> you know the lead singer of ABBA, the blonde-haired lady. Yes. It was wonderful, wasn't she? Yep. She's actually doing a duet at the minute with Gary Barlow because she's just come out of obscurity. Forty-five. After some singles stuff that she did in the 80s and 90s. She decided to walk away from fame, but she's returned. Going to be doing some stuff with Gary Barlow soon. 134. Ooh, he's pretty boring here, isn't he? Gary Barlow? Yeah. He's a bit... Yeah. Not a fan, then? No. Nah. Very vanilla. 100. I was going to say Did that you can't 170. Anton actually looks like Gary Barlow a little bit in his early days. Here's one Thank for you, you, Nico. In a, I don't think you can do this without it sounding Geordie. Super Trooper. <laughs> You've gone full on Jimmy Carr there, haven't you? I was going to say Super Anton Victor there. He left himself handily placed with another 60 on dart three. Double top for Victor. Game shot on the first Everything's the going his way today, and I am convinced now that his previous experience here has served him well Second because he looks more first. comfortable than he did at any point when he played here a few weeks back. Yeah, certainly playing dividends, isn't it? Just like I say, it just looks just so comfortable. 177. You have a favourite other song? Fifty-eight. No. Waterloo for me. Yeah, they're, they're. Yeah, it's just. You know, I'm more of a gangster rap kind of guy. But Abba doesn't really. One hundred. You know, when you're not ready for a statement to be said, <laughs> and then you just hear it. That really took me off guard. That one. Now, I'll tell you why Waterloo's my favourite, because it, it features in a very famous Simpsons episode when Mr. Burns is in a tank looking for Homer Simpson's mum. And he says, I've been waiting 25 years for this. And he puts the cassette in, and it starts... Duh, 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 and then all of a sudden, Waterloo comes on, and he looks over at Waylon Smithers and said, sorry, sir, I must have over taped over your cassette there. It's one of the best comedy moments in history. Well, that is interesting, isn't it? Was he going for 54, 92. 54 for double eight? Yep. Gonna have to watch out 59. for some interesting Antonio Carl, routes here from Anton when his opponents aren't on I finishes. Can't, I can't recall recall seeing that before. 
54 first on 124. Keep going right, and hopefully he's got the measure of this shot. This is thrown from over eight feet. 16. Victor Car 145. This is a shot that Anton had a crack at in his previous match, but he couldn't find it. Ninety-five. Antonio Gar sixteen. Primo Dota double eight. Must equalize. Having trouble with it. Game show but does find leg. arguably one of the most difficult shots that we've seen today. Yeah, that was a exceptional Third shot under the first. circumstances. These are two players who have played on the development tour this year. I don't think they're going to be playing on the development tour much longer. I think they're very close to their careers being solely about senior dart, but one thing I think they should be very proud of is that they were both inside the top 25 of the averages for the development tour this year. Victor actually six places above Anton. 85.52 over 18 games. 100. I'm sure they've spent a fair bit of time with each other this year because they went to the same four tournaments. And I mentioned earlier that Anton had made a couple of last 16s. Well, one of them there was a real two. pattern to what Victor was doing. As we see our first maximum of this game from Ersland. He had a last 64, then a 85. last 32. Then the following day, he went to the last 16, then he went to the quarterfinals. So as each event Steady went on, progression. he got better. Well, you can you can say that about his 165 debut here that week progressively improved absolutely just like anton in this leg yeah possible and Arter. 60 anton your car 16. the best leg of the series pesky double eight around the houses and victor, victor tingstrom could pinch this Could be an act of darting larceny. Double seven. One hundred and good effort. Antonio Car two. Still. Anton has to be careful here. Again, you want to put one just over the top wire if you're gonna if you're gonna miss. Lay down the local pub. One up, one in. There's the one up. Even closer. No oh, score. Over Victor Carr, 14. He's missing too many doubles. Happened quite a lot today. Four out of 18 in his first game. Game shot on the third He does leg. pay the Victor price. He was on a double after nine darts in that leg and loses it. That will hurt. Yeah, one from 12 on the doubles. Fourth leg, Anton Victor, to do first. two from Game three. On. And when Victor was making the last state of a development tour event, on the 19th of August, he lost to Jarno Bottenberg, who played here at the Super Series very recently. 16. One of my favourite names on the tour because it resembles the name of a cake. Yeah, I was just, gonna, I was just about to say Battenberg. <laughs> it's lovely too, that. I just got one of the bowls That's the square. Wrong. That's the one with the little well, squares, isn't it? They're very hard to make. Yeah, it's marzipan, isn't it? Not everybody's cup of tea, that. It's lovely with a cup of tea. There you go, you've just been given the key to Chris Mason's heart and stomach. Likes a layered mm. cake. 45. Well, of all the cakes, it's a Black Forest Gatto is my favourite. You are old school, aren't you? Mm. You like Battenberg and Black Forest Gatto. Yeah. 60. Give me apple crumble, apple crumble and a custard. Oh, I like a Milfoy. I once had a Milfoy sitting next to Didier Deschamps in Monaco. I felt decidedly out of place. 100. Who's the most famous person you've ever had food with? You've had a few chin wags with some yeah. top celebs, haven't you? Okay, 
He's it's either going to be Vinny Jones. 94. From the sporting world, or... Maybe Chris 85. Eubank. It's quite bizarre. Earlier this year, I actually had breakfast about two yards away from Tyson Fury. I had a cup of tea with Alex Ferguson. That'll do. 58. And 159, as everybody knows, you can't finish that in this format. Can't leave it handy. 91. Antonio Carl, 144. Why do I get the feeling that Anton Erstland's going to have to hit one of these today just to get himself going? I got on a lift with Tom Cruise. He's dinky. Wee. But he's good. 43. Victor Carr, 68. Double top for Victor for 3-1. 28. I expected Antonio him to hit that because of how things have gone for him today. You could put two dice in his hand right now. If he asked for a seven, he would roll one. That's craps. <laughs> oh, no. Victor would have thought that was craps. Victor, car 40. That's another missed dart on a double. One from 13. But ultimately, his downfall here. Fives Game in for the three play. one. Victor Tingstrom. Gonna be an interesting battle between these two players over the next three days. There will be bragging rights. Like there was Victor love at the first. start of the game. game. On. Guarantee you they want to beat the living Gravidlax out of each other. <laughs> Ninety six. Don't know what Gravidlax is, it's cured salmon. Salt, sugar, and sometimes with beetroot. The beautiful thing. Sixty. One of these players one hundred does win the group. We are guaranteed that the other one will have to go through another route to make Saturday night. It will be big news for Swedish darts if they were both to make Saturday night. Maybe one or both of them could make it into Group B. And it's a severe challenge in Group B this week. Not only because you'd have to go through Scott Marsh, Tommy Morris and Mike 92. Gillett. But you might have to play some very late darts into the early hours. And you might have to say, gimme, gimme, gimme a double after midnight. I think Anton's sending out an SOS to the doubles. Don't forget as well that if you have traveled here from Sweden, I know it's only an hour's time difference, but I think that's magnified by the late nights on the Thursdays and Fridays. One hundred. Victor Carr, 154. This is a match-winning chance for someone who is three from seven on doubles. And so far today, his doubles have been very impressive, apart from maybe one leg. Yeah, that one, 94. it was a 25 dark leg, and they, they both missed, missed doubles. Yet again, we see Anton waiting on a big 140-plus shot with his opponent on something 74. easier. Victor Car 60. This is to be top of the table on his own, on points, and with a superior leg difference over everybody at an early stage. Yep, and to remain unbeaten. What is a very tough group. Game shot on the match. And he finds Victor tops. Jobs. And he does make it three from three. And, well, Anton taking it very well there, despite hitting five one forces. Victor didn't hit a single 140, but here's the victor by four legs to one. There are the numbers 87 68, 85 85 for Anton. Both players with a 180. There was a 177 in there from Anton, but it was all in vain. And when we come back,
It's Dom Taylor against Scott Mitchell. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series live on Sporty Stuff TV and of course the Moda Super Series YouTube channel and Dom Taylor, well he's one of the favourites in this group but he's not had a strong start to his day, two defeats so far for the Tower and he takes on Scott Mitchell, the former world champion who has picked up a victory, a slow start for Scotty Dog when he was beaten by the so far undefeated Victor Tingstrom but Mitchell did get a victory against the other Swede in the group, Anton Ursland, last time out. So can he get a second and make it three defeats from three for Taylor? That would be unforeseen for him. And guiding you through the action, it's Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Thank you once again, Chris. Time to see these two tussle over the course of possibly seven legs. When we looked at this fixture a little bit earlier on, we thought that maybe at this time it would be a tussle between maybe two undefeated players, but that hasn't proven to be the case. In fact, things are getting very interesting on Monday because in a game after this, it's Nathan Treadgold against Victor Tingstrom, and between those two players, there's only one match lost. But with these, it's three. First leg, Dom to throw first. Game on. Yeah, big game, even this early in proceedings in this group. In regards to certainly winning the group, Tom Taylor, I need to 60. pick up his first win of the day. Losing that first game to Andy Bolton by four legs to two. We thought, 100. no panic stations there. He's played well, but Andy just played a little bit better. And there was nothing wrong with his doubles. He just didn't get enough chances. But losing to Treadgold in game five by four legs to nil, it's not panic stations. 100. It was just a big warning. Well, the, the main issue we will have is that the leg difference. 
already on minus six. 13 legs between himself and the top spot of Victor Tingstrom. Albeit with this game in hand, so he's got to make that count. And with Mitchell in the middle of the pack at the minute, things could bunch up a bit if Don Taylor gets his act together. He's just left 170 from the middle of the 300s. That was a really good shot. Ninety-seven, Dominic Carr, one hundred and seventy. Didn't get a one seventy last week. Haven't got one here. Very easy for me to sit here and say that I'm sure someone's going to hit one at some point, but nobody hit one in Champions Week either a couple of weeks ago. We expect. Do give them enough matches. 104 43. games per week. Dominic Carr, 68. 45 in total in Group A. That is five matches per day per player. He could use this just to get himself back on track. Game shot on the first That's leg. more like John it. Taylor. Yeah, lovely clean leg. 15 dart hold. A 171 in there. I bet it feels weird like Scott to throw first. for a referee Game saying on. Taylor. Shot in the first leg. Don Taylor. Probably feels like he's about to say Phil Taylor. He might. And it was Phil Taylor 60. who was playing in that infamous game yeah. where Paul had the 127 in game. Taylor's face in that game and Van Gerwen's face, it lives long in my memory. It's one of my favorite things to watch. randomly cropped up the other day on, on YouTube in one of the funniest moment, moments in darts 40. compilations. It really was Because they both moment. were looking at each other and saying, well, was it game or not game? One hundred. It was a great recovery. I'll give him that. Wasn't it just? Blackpool can do funny things to you. Portsmouth is a long way from Blackpool. And July is a long way from November. Dark players play in any condition. Hot, humid, cold, miserable. But one thing we do here at the live lounge is we make sure that these players are comfortable in their practice room and on stage. That's why they're still able to play in short sleeves. Sixty-four. Yes, walking in here today was like walking into a very warm, comfortable environment, wasn't it? How good was that, Dot? Just caressed it through. Ninety-nine. Dominic Carr, one hundred and fifty-seven. One hundred and twenty-five or a bull to get into two dart range, but just fails on that mission, giving Taylor a great chance of two-nil. Whether it's the possibility of taking it with that visit got the car, or the next because 102 is no gimme. It's starting to look a little easier. Double top. Danger plan. Decides to 64. go for tops instead of 16s. Doesn't pay off. Taylor has a chance of 2-0 with a very similar check out to what he did in leg one which he finished on double 16. Thirty-two. Scott so Car twenty. Back for double ten. Holden level. Sound like a bricklayer holding a level. That's a dream guide for him. Ten. Oh, Dominic Car thirty-two. He can't believe it. I can't believe it. Dom Taylor probably can't believe it either, but he is very happy that those two darts missed double five. He does have to move for that one. Just a little bit to his right. Where does he go here, miss? 
Got to pick a... Oh, he's got to go high. No score. Good Scott Lucar, 10. Double five. Second time of asking. He's got that guide again. No score. But he hasn't Scott got the Lucar, double. 32. This is very reminiscent of game two when he was playing Tingstrom. Was it leg two that they played where all of those doubles were missed? Game shot on the second leg. Well, there Dom you go. Taylor. That is a break of throwing 19 darts. And Dom Taylor had three visits. Yeah, it was the it was the opening leg. Ah. Third leg on to through first. Game on. Well I was I was watching well I was following Dom's progress at Q School this year and he, he flew through stage one. And then into stage two. Made a final, lost a to Aaron Monk, and I thought, well, that's it. He's 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 done and dusted, and then he just couldn't string any wins together. Lost to Chris Gilliland, then to Cam Crabtree. Sixty. Beat Pete Burgoyne, then lost to Adam Smith Neil six five, and then lost to Schling Ting and Reese Colley. Edams. 60. Lost to Benito. He lost to Benito van der Pass. Well, um, he's been given names in every game. Yeah. But that's the 14. thing about stage two, isn't it? When you go to Q school, you are going to be playing people who have either done it before who, or people who are running hot. Yeah. thing that he did have in his sights very recently was a berth at the Players' Championship finals, but he needed to win that Players' Championship that he ultimately lost in the semi-finals, and he fell short by about six and a bit thousand pounds. Might seem like a lot, but had he won those two games, he would have been there. I wonder if he's going to be one of those players who coasts around the bubble for things for a couple of seasons and just 140. tries to find a way to break that emotional and mental barrier. I think the players that... Well, there's, a, there's an argument for both, isn't there? I think sometimes it can all come too quick. We've seen so many players with so much potential, 100. but everything Don't happens count, too quick. And they then go on the slide. Think of someone like Ross Smith, who was sort of back and forth, wasn't he? And then decided to have some time away. And he's come back and, and more than resurrected his career. 51 needed for Bolt. Taylor's got a chance of 3 0 now. 57. Dominic Carr, 46. Trying to predict today. It's like me trying to write a novel in Japanese. Game there you go, it is 3 0. John Taylor. 17 dart hold, and he is averaging 17 darts in this game. Four face shot to throw and first. An 88.41 average is exactly 17 darts. Yeah, and he's, he's he's had the same amount of darts at a double as as Mitchell. But the difference One being. Them, 40. He's hit three of them. Mitchell yet to find a single double. Amazing how much of an effect one leg can have on a match. All of those misses at 100. double five. And don't forget the misses at tops and tens as well. Talking of missing, we're going to be missing Aspinall and Peter Wright from the Players' Championship finals. 100. Bizarre as that. Aspinall is bizarre enough that the match play champion is not going to be in mine head. Because... He's someone who is looking for the Minehead double because he's won the UK Open there, but he hasn't won the Players' Championship finals. But if you consider what Peter 60. Wright did two years ago in winning the tournament, he now sees 100,000 ranking points disappear. Yep. Without the opportunity to defend. 
Going to be nice and fresh for the World Championship, that's for sure, where he 16. defends a certain 500,000 ranking points. And the way he was playing in, well, just past the middle of the year, I was, I was really concerned, but the tenacity shown in 97. winning yet another big title just a matter of weeks ago, the Europeans bounce right back. Yeah, but he's not a top 10 player of all time, though. <laughs> it's a great first start from Dom. That is a great visit. A really great visit. Because Mitchell now knows that he, if he misses this, he's teetering on the edge. Breathing down the back of his neck. Yeah. Goes for the ball. Just watch out for this first dart from Taylor because if he finds the single 20 just above the 60 bed, 48. do not be surprised if he stays on the 60 for double 15. The very Michael Smith kind of player, but it is very dependent on what dart one does. So what does he do? He goes down south. Double 18. Game what a great performance that is. Taylor. The arms are wide because he's thinking, where has that been? We may have asked the same question, but welcome to the party, Dom. Because that 4-0 victory over the 2015 Lakeside champion means that he is very much back in the reckoning now. And it is Anton Erstland who is bottom of the table after three rounds of play. 91-09 and 50% on the doubles. Not a great deal to say about that apart from positive things. We will have a short break now, and when we come back, it is Treadgold against Tingstrom to see who's at the top of the table when they've finished 10 games on Monday. Hello again, welcome back to the Moda Super Series. Nine games down in Group A for week two of Series 6. Paul, um, it's been an interesting set of results so far, hasn't it? Surprising, I think is the right word. 
I think if we were to look at all 15 fixtures and try and predict some of these results, a lot of them we would have got wrong. But that's really good because we like surprises here at the Live Lounge. And when we've got somebody coming in that we don't know a great deal about, to see them succeeding is terrific. And I think Nathan is very, very happy with his first three rounds. Yeah, he certainly will be. Um, Andy Bolton is a player we do know a lot about. And it started very, very well for the X Factor today. Won his opening match. And at this point, you're thinking he's just going to go on and do what he always does. Yeah, just doing Andy things, coming into Group A and look, looking very comfortable. This was just a, a really good clinical first game. And you can see what it meant to him. He's had a real purpose today as well. So to be stunted a little bit in round number two, he'll not be happy with it, but he understands the complexities of the three-day campaign and he won't be too perturbed. Yeah, absolutely. The man that you've sort of singled out, Nathan Treadgold, this is some debut for an ADC qualifier, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrific for him. I'm, I'm really pleased for him because there was some real quality in here. I know he's had a couple of shaky moments on trying to finish certain legs off, but there was a lot of clinical uh, darts coming when he was playing great opponents. I mean, he took care of Dom Taylor to nil, and then he takes care of Andy Bolton by four legs to three, and that's after uh, he's beaten Dom Taylor. So he's growing in confidence. And look at what he did here against Dom. He's got a three nil lead, and he takes care of this one here. And just see how much he's enjoying the experience. And the experience is just going to continue all week long. That's someone else who's definitely enjoying the experience and is the real standout star of the day so far, Victor Tingstrom, three from three. I really do think that Victor has used the experience of the last time he was here to become more comfortable so he can play his best stuff here. I know he's had a couple of legs where he's spent a bit of time on the outer ring, but... There's been a lot of quality in there and the exuberance and the fast-paced stuff that you get from the Swede. We've been promised a lot from Victor, from people back in Sweden and people who know a lot about Scandinavian darts. But he's delivering today and it's great to see. And it all makes it very interesting. If we take a look at the table, I mean, you, you would expect those top players to emerge at some point. But the fact that Tread Gold and Tingstrom have stolen a march means that this is going to be a close-run thing, surely? It definitely is today. It'll be really interesting to see where they lie at this point tomorrow. So let's not get too carried away with how the table looks at the minute. This is a really good start for both Victor and Nathan. And one of them is about to get two more points as well. But I think this time tomorrow will tell us an even greater story. Yeah, huge match potentially here. If Victor does win again, is a massive gap between him and third place at least. And it's an opportunity to have the perfect day as well, which is something he hasn't done before. And sometimes when you want success uh, in a place like this, you've got to be able to do things that you've never done before. So over to Victor and Nathan to do it. Yeah, will Victor get the victory or will it be a triumph for Treadgold? Let's find out. Back to Chris Mason, who Paul's going to join. Thank you very much, gents. Yeah, well, there is an opportunity. As Nico said, for Victor to have the perfect day. And if he gets the better of Treadgold, his final match will be against a resurgent Dom Taylor. That would be the penultimate match of the day. This is first up. Then we have Mitchell against Bolton. Anton against Dom Taylor. Mitchell against Treadgold. Taylor against Tingstrom. And our final gap match will be Andy Bolton against Anton. First leg, like Nathan Ustland. to throw first. Game on. Certainly an opportunity for Tingstrom to uh, get a bit of a stranglehold on this group. 60. I think he's the type of player that would relish the opportunity to top the table, make the rest of the field chase him 41 139 
45. Red gold has very much been the surprise package so far today. 100. Of all the players, he was the one here making his debut. So unknown territory for not just us, but for him as a player. Well, who doesn't like a surprise package? Absolutely. You know when the guy turns up 48 at the door and package for such and such and you think, I haven't ordered anything. It's a nice moment. Might be from Santa Claus. 60. I wonder what these guys want for have you, Christmas. Have you seen Barzi has put his Christmas lights up and that, the decorations? I know. I think, he'd, I think he'd like to have them up all year round. Silent disgust. Double 12. 132. I would have been lighting up the stage had he hit that one. Everything seems to be going his way so far today. I like this a lot. 133. Victor Very nearly 12. the nine count on 19s to leave tops. This is a break of throw opportunity. Whoa, that's a wild one. Game shot on the first leg. Oof, you know when it's just your day. My goodness, that was nowhere near second what he was aiming at. First, game he one. pulls the second dart wide of double six. Then he pulls the third dart wide of the middle, but it goes in. Just goes to show that he does have a miss, and it's left. I think that was something we picked up on the last time he was here. And we are reliably informed that 94. Nathan Treadgold is very good at guitar. Yes, he's a guitar teacher. Thank you to Nick Kenny, friend of the Super Series, of course, who dropped me a message. He's a, 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 what was it? A fingers guitar champion. A finger style. He must be really, really good then. But is he as good as Wayne 16. Campbell? Is he as good as Garth Elgar? Is it Nathan's world? Is it party time? 16. Is it excellent? And you do for me. E even his cat's got his own Instagram page. You're a big fan of that, aren't you? Yeah. I prefer cats to human beings, to be honest. And his cat, apparently, is named Berlioz, which yes, is a which... very famous composer, which was... Actually made famous somewhat later in history by the movie yeah. Sleeping with the Enemy because of the very somber Symphony Fantastique, which was accompanied by some rather macabre scenes between Julia Roberts and her co stars. 93. Some film. One of the best scores of all time. Very underrated. 54. That's what they're looking for here. Yeah. Great so scores. If anybody's in Portsmouth and you've got a, an electric guitar and, a, a, a guitar and an amp you'd like to let us borrow, we'll maybe get him to play a few tunes. 46. Victor Car 132. Bullseye first. 57. Had he got that, it would have been a 64. shot at the bullseye for 2-0. He had a nice guide. Nathan's going to have to pull out the fire here. And still finish. Not now. 48. Might be another attempt at the treble 20 here. Some people like treble 12 on 68. It's those Victor. Double top. Two nil. The second leg, Victor Singstrom. Do you know that Eric Bristow was a very accomplished drummer? I didn't know that. So like so if we were going to put a first. band together, <laughs> well, we know, we've got a guitarist now. That's that sorted. Game oh, there on. you go, Nathan. You've got Eric Bristow as a drummer. What a band already! Who'd be on bass guitar? Oh, Danny Lowby. He's a yeah. He plays a, in a band, as does 52. his dad. Vocals. 
You know, Bunty likes to sing song, doesn't he? Yeah, Adrian, Adrian Lewis. Adrian Lewis. I think he can hold a note just about. 59. Backup singers. Um, ah, there is a pin badge on his shirt showing the cat. 99. I wonder if he's had that specially made. Well, here's a here's one for our social media following. If we are to have a band of Nathan and Eric and Danny and Adrian on vocals, what would the band be called? Well, there was a band called Darts, wasn't there? Really? Sure there was. Well, do you want to hear something really interesting? There's only one player here this week who's 100. got a song on Spotify. And that's Anton Ersland, because he is very musical too. Yeah, Darts were a, a nine-piece British doo-wop revival band. <laughs> I knew I didn't know a band called Darts. Here's the thing I didn't expect you to say today. Doo-wop. Do one usually. <laughs> Sixty-five. Nathan Carr, one hundred and seventy. This would be gold for Nathan. That was Spandau Ballet, mate. Ninety-six. One seven one's the magic number here. That's why he could go to the nineteens and does. Gonna have to get to the bottom of that punk story because Nathan Carr, 74. You and I are both the same. We like things to be uniform. Super first start. Bit of a flyer. Oh, he's 58. done that again. Victor Carr, Did it earlier in the day. Becoming a bit of a habit. Ninety-eight. Great approach play from Victor. And if Nathan has any more problems on double eight or a subsequent double, he could well be on route to three nil. Can Nathan stop him? Game yes, he can. Third leg. Nathan Threadgold. And this game is being played at a level that we have not seen today. Are we starting to see just a tiny well, bit of tiredness come into game play? One. Fatigue. Play its part on day one whilst you get sort of what adjusted to the time of okay. being up that early and playing darts this early. By day two, you're sort of like, okay, I'm in the swing of things. 60. Have you got a favourite guitar riff that you would request from Nathan if he had his instrument here? You wanted to test him. What could he possibly 40. do? Give him something hard. Like Freebird by Leonard Skinner. Yeah, that'll work. 100. I wonder what his favourite is. What kind of music he likes to play. 93. He's been hitting all the right notes today, that's for sure. I'd give him a test. I'd say Empty 39. Rooms by Gary Moore. Victor Carr, 88. Oh, savage. Need some good acoustics for that one. Wouldn't surprise me if he's not one of his favourite guitarists. Oh, he was very good. Did you know that Gary Moore was married to the daughter of former Leicester City manager Jim Smith? Didn't. Do one of those mindless facts for the day. He's actually Jim Smith's son-in-law. Nice little camera angle to see top six. Just Victor like that Armstrong. with the odd point, giving him the guide. He's done that on purpose. I'm going to have serious like words for Victor about it because it just doesn't on. fly with us. It's like people who throw odd coloured flights. I, just, I can't get along with it.
135. And you see a lot of Welsh players, don't you, wearing red. They're so proud of their heritage and their colours. Really nice to see. 100. Been good on that treble 19, hasn't he? All day long. Yep. He did have a, a nine count on them earlier. But whether it's in the approach play or the switch. 140. On the cover shot, he has been very efficient. I wonder how many of these players are good at cricket. Whether they know how to play it. 59. Difficult game to get through your head. But when you do, it's addictive. Oh, it's... I used, I used Ronnie Baxter used to spend hours trying to teach me how to play it, and Eric. And then when the penny drops, you're like, ah, now I get it. And then it's fascinating. Steve Brown, American... Well, he lives in America. He's not American, of course. He's from Surrey, but he was a fabulous... 82. Player. Victor Carr, 164. As was John Love. That I can believe. 57. Nathan Newcastle, 106. To save the game. To save his two-game winning streak. 57. What a lovely first start that is. Double top. 86. Game not saved Victor just Carl, yet. 107. But this could be the knockout blow from the Swede, who could be on eight points. And double digits leg difference if he finds this. Double top. Game shot very, the very Victor good Tingstrom. from Victor Tingstrom. He's starting to live up to his promise. He didn't show it a few weeks ago when he was here in Series 5, but he's showing it today to us and to everybody around the world watching. Victor Tingstrom goes to 8 points and plus 10 in his leg difference. He will not be caught in this round of matches. At least he may not be caught all day. 85.99 the average and 50% on the doubles. It's not bad at all. Over to Mitchell and Bolton. Maybe the biggest fixture of the day because of their previous reputations. Let's see what they do today as they will do battle next.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Scott Mitchell and Andy Bolton are about to embark on a darting duel between two high-profile players here at the Live Lounge. A pair of them have met 11 times before this fixture, including on the Challenge Tour this year, Bolton getting the better of Mitchell in a semi-final. They also, of course, met when Scott Mitchell finally made his debut on the European Tour uh, just a couple of months ago, and he got the victory in that one. So nothing to determine who will win this one. And today, whoever does lose this one will only be able to get a maximum of four points. Won't be the start they were expecting. I'm sure Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason will agree. We definitely agree, Murph. Today has not followed the blueprint that we thought that we had in our hands at the start of play, especially after match one. Bolton was beating Taylor by four legs to two. We all thought he might just canter through this group at times, but it's going to be anything but a canter for these two. Yeah, the winner of this moves on to four points and depending on the scoreline could take second spot First leg, Scott briefly two off of Fred Gold. Game on. It's a funny old story when it comes to Scott Mitchell, isn't it, in the European Tour. He spends two years with a tour card, doesn't qualify for any European Tour events, loses his tour privileges, 100. and because of an associate member qualifier, he then qualifies for the Hungarian Darts Trophy, which took place at the MVM Dome in September, which, my word, what a venue that 100. was. It looks incredible. Scott Mitchell won by six legs to five in what was a, a very decent contest. I know how much that meant to Scott because he waited such a long time to actually play in an event of that ilk. But he was done by Dave Chisnell in the end. And it was Dave Chisnell who would go on to win the title, beating nine daughter Luke Humphreys in the final in one of the best 140 European Tour Finals that we've ever seen. In fact, I put it second on the all-time list behind Anderson Van Geer went from Hildesheim from almost a decade ago, which was simply ridiculous. 100. Yeah, if you've never been to a European Tour and you get the opportunity, if there's one local to you, if you're in Germany or Holland or Belgium. 140. There's just Got the car, one incredible, aren't they? Yeah, I like, I like Graz. Yeah. Right next to the lake. Late April. Beautiful weather. Astonishing views. You've got to have that kind of motivation as well. There are so many people now who wake up in the morning and they say, my sole ambition is to make the Super Series. I've I've heard about it on social media channels and people saying it's my turn to go there. Got Even the this 56. weekend, Ryan Hogarth losing the final in Ireland, part of his tweet was, get me to Modus. <laughs> 46. And you were car 38. Do you think we should have a European tour in Wales and... Maybe in Scotland and one in Ireland. This is going to be the shortest answer ever. Shot on the first leg. Andy Bolton. One of the shortest legs we've just seen from Andy Bolton. Break it through on 13, but yes. Yeah. Second leg, Andy did first. first. Game on. The old Premier League year there is just not enough for me. And I think that type of event would work perfectly because it is only a... They're only 122. Well, not, you know, they're the equivalent to the ones we do on ITV. And I think they'd be so well supported. I agree. European tour in Ireland. Just Who'd make it happen. Here? Do it in Belfast. Yeah. There's literally countless venues there. They could stage one of those and then do it in Wales. Welsh dart fans get one of them a year, don't they? Can you imagine what the crowds would be like on a Saturday? Yeah. For Kevin Price and Johnny Clayton and others. Word. And think about when 100. there was a European Tour event in England 
won by John Pott, beating Mine Stuart it. Kellett in the final. And that wasn't too far from here. It was only two and a half hours away. And that leads me to something, actually, because I talked about Adrian Gray what and Jack Mail earlier. I heard a little whisper over the weekend that somebody won a qualifier to get here by the name of Stuart Kellett. Wow. I wonder, Stuart, hey, are you going to bring your tight car, pants? What you for? He loves that little skit on uh, the Jimmy Fallon show. Another one of those. Everybody wouldn't be talking about Andy's tight pants. Hey, They'd be talking about his 144 checkout. Believe he's ninety-seven. Started and on twenties on 67. two six five. Schoolboy error. Double top for Andy. Game shot on the second leg. It didn't and make any in. difference. But you're the same as me, Miss. When you see somebody not doing the right thing first. on route on. from a number like that, all you can do is close your eyes and shake yeah. your head. If he's shaking his One head at the moment, 14. this performance from Andy Bolton, two legs in, averaging 111, two out of two on the doubles. He's pretty unplayable right now. This is the kind of player that when 97. he's got a bee in his bonnet, he can extract more from himself when he's a bit angsty. We saw that from Thibaut Tricol on Saturday night. When he was out, he played his best darts. He was so furious. I mean, Mitchell's 100. averaging 96.73. There you go. Look at those. The example of the kind of start Holton has made to this match. Based on the amount of success that Bolton's had with us here this year, Almost like he's been writing his own checks. One out of them, 40. But now that he is over the age of 50, is the PDC Tour still a big ambition for him, or does he want to pick and choose where he plays Shoulder now? Does he want to do seniors? Does he want to do here? Does he want to do other things? Yeah, I think this, this, a lot of players are going to be... Well, they've got a lot to think about between now and, and January. We're going to see a, really a different approach, and maybe at some point in the PDC have to maybe look at their their rulings over certain things of 96. where players can ply their trade. Oh, this is better from Mitchell. Game shot on the third Doesn't leg. get much better Stop than Mitchell. that, does it? Lovely view of that double eighteen. You are looking at two players who occupied fourth leg Andy to throw first. Game on. Themselves inside the top 15 of the challenge to our order of merit this year. Mitchell finished 15th. Andy fourth. Just behind Heartbreak Hotel, 85. which was John Henderson, who lost out to Owen Bates for a tour card in a place at Ali Pali by one game. Owen Bates made the final. Of the last tournament. 60. Faced match darts yeah, against Mike Warburton. Multiple times that day. Indeed. He was, was he 4-1 down against Warby? Yeah, he was. Comes through that game, makes it to Alexandra Palace, gets a two-year tour card, and Hendo loses both. Destiny. Have you noticed as well that over the last 100. decade or so, Scott Mitchell's never changed his hairstyle? Somewhat Statue of Liberty style haircut, isn't it? Keep it simple. Just like Andy's. 60. Now you don't see a great deal of creative hairstyles here at the Super Series, do you? It's not like store bunts against Peter Wright. But we are going to see a few different hairstyles when the ladies are here on Saturday afternoon. We are. 100.
One out of the other visit there from Andy to get himself onto a finish. I know who I was thinking of when it came to Scott's haircut. It looks like Simon from the in-betweeners. Completed it, mate. 60. Under your car, 120. I've seen people hit three double tops on this shot, including Reese Robinson. I think he's done it three times now. What hasn't he done? 60. He hasn't won a series. He'll be a player dangerous at Q school, that's for sure. Oh, definitely. We are going to have Super Series action all the way through to the middle part of December, and we will be back. 90. Under your just after 60. New Year. We won't be gone for long. And he's keeping it simple and very good so far. Double 10 for 3 1. 40. Scott Lucar, 91. What does he do? 25 or 51? Used to be a new school shot, this. It's now old school. Oh, how things can change. Players now are just so assured that they're going to hit the big treble. 66. But for Under me, 2 1 down with your opponent on a double, I think that's the right way. I'd rather get a dart at the ball than a dart at nothing. Game shot on the four flag. Andy Bolton. Interesting reaction there from Andy when he hits that double ten. One of... Where have they this been? Well, he's actually got three doubles in this game. And a two-leg cushion. That's another great performance from him. 96 average, 60% on doubles. What have you made of the standard 85. today? Because I've been quite surprised by it. Yeah, there's been a... And there's been a, a couple of scruffy ones, but early on a Monday, it's people just finding their feet. 81. But unusually here, we only have one debutant in Nathan Treadgold. And but it's where it's due. He's played fabulously in his middle matches. Absolutely. And he is 59. the only debutant all week. Nine of the 12 players this week 99. have made a Saturday. Including both of these guys. So I get the feeling that... Well, these two met on a Saturday, didn't they? In Series 4. Indeed they did. Week 7. And it was 4-0 to Bolton 100. in the semi-final. And we're starting to see more of that now. Because experience does tell when it comes to people being invited back. If you have a really good time here and win a week, you're going to get invited back again. And even the ADC qualifiers have got strength these days and they've got previous experience. Just look at someone like Adam Mould, who was the ADC number one in the rankings. He's played plenty here. And he's already been in a couple of Saturday nights. Nobody's been in more than three Saturday nights from your players this week. 136. Scott Car 157. Tommy Morris, Dom Taylor, and Jamie Kelling have all made three Saturdays before in a qualifying campaign. 100. More than one and of those is definitely going to make it four. But speaking of making four... And he needs double 16 for 4 1. Game and he gets his own back match. for Hungary for now, but there will be a return fixture tomorrow. The immediate goal for Andy Bolton was to get himself on two wins from four games. And he has a chance of six points by the end of the day if he does beat Anton Ersland in game 15. The autopsy from that one continues at the end of the match, but Mitchell does lose it by four legs to one, thanks to an excellent display from Bolton in excess of 96. And again, the doubles weren't too bad as well. When we come back, Anton Ersland, aforementioned, will take on Taylor after this.
Welcome back here at the Modus Super Series. Game 12 of today's 15 fixtures is about to get underway. And it's a meeting between Dom Taylor, a former finalist on that live lounge stage, and Anton Ursland, a former winner, of course, who competed in Champions Week in Series 5 just a couple of weeks ago. But so far, one ton has only got one win. And the same applies to his opponent as well. So who will double their tally here? Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason are on hand to talk you through it. Yes, that's about to change, Mr Murphy, because they are towards the bottom of the table. Well, Mitchell at the minute actually occupies the last spot in the table on two points and minus five. Closely followed by Anton Ersland with minus four and Dom Taylor on minus two. They're all on one win, but that's about to change. And things have changed for Dom Taylor because he did win his last match. Looks like Anton to throw first. Game on. And he beat Scott Mitchell by four legs to nil. So the last hour has not been good for Mitchell at all as he's lost eight legs to one. Yes, he's having a, a bit of a nightmare Thank at the moment. Sir. But what is evident is what we've lacked in 180s, Nico, been made up for in the displays of doubling. Tingstrom, four from six, four from eight, four from eight. That's his last three matches played. That one there, Bolton, four from seven. Dom, four from 94. eight last time out. Nathan in that. Wonderful performance against Dom was four from five. Just goes to show that if you're winning a match and you're not even needing double digits at doubles in the match, you're playing beautifully on the outer ring and possibly the bullseye as well. But they're going to have to go some to top the best doubling display I've seen in a daily campaign in the last few months. And that came One from Sebastian Biowetsky. He had a daily campaign. Well, he was 68% for the day. That's staggering. And that was in Champions Week, admittedly. And in a week where we saw 54% for the day from Rob 100. Grundy. And 57% from other people as well. Now, the doubling we've seen today, if we could extract a couple of really dodgy legs out, this would be up there as one of the best we've seen. One hundred and thirty-one. Dom's going to have to use the board here potentially, just like Anton has. He's done it expertly. Fifty-four. I wonder what kind of performance Anton's going to need here 40. to get the win. He has got the darts. I think the word effective. And he's got to stop doing this. Yeah, that's that's been his undoing all day. Been going around the houses on tops and tens and fives, and no he's score. been in the madhouse more than anybody else. Got to find those primary doubles. That's what I mean by effective. Ninety-five. When you I are at forty, 40 and you're winning legs on double five. You're putting yourself through the mill. Nice line. 20. Loses the line car, and gives Dom one free chance of stealing leg one. Rubber 19 for tops. I would love to know what's going through his mind when well, he just his said. lips are moving there. It's miles away, mate. 53. <laughs> Antonio Carr, 20. Would have been said just like you as well. It would. Game shot on the first leg. And on Oslan. Well, one thing that Dom will definitely understand is that that is not Gert Weckhead. That ain't Gert Weckhead. Second leg, Dom to third first. Game on. That's the one thing you've taught me about Bristolian <laughs> slang that has really stuck. Well, you, you, don't, you don't use Facebook, but there's a... There's a guy on there called Odd Job Terry. One hundred. Visits all the 
if you were from Bristol, you would know these places. Pubs, clubs, cafes, chip shops, that kind of thing. And then certain areas. And he's 55. Absolute, I'll play you some of it later. It's absolutely genius. Does he need subtitles? No, no. But there's... If you were from certain parts of Bristol, they got their own sort of what? slang. One hundred thirty-nine. I see. It's hilarious. Well, probably the same. Newcastle would be the same. Oh yeah. Some people that are even related to me now that I don't understand, because <laughs> I haven't lived there in a while. One hundred forty. Actually, going back up to Newcastle sometime soon. Nice. Get a little dose of <laughs> the very cold weather that Newcastle has to offer. Interesting to see what the, the local dart scene up there is. 56. Going to feed me because I'm going to do a little bit of research while I'm up there. I'm going to catch up with some old friends and they're going to tell me all about who's coming through. I'm going to do my little. Will you pop in and see Dobie? 59. Senior? Might just do that. I'm going to catch up with my old pal Stevie Wanless, former captain of Northumberland. Doesn't play County or Super League anymore. One of the Northumberland legends. He can tell me who's coming 100. through. 100. I've heard a few whispers about some young players who are very hungry. That kind of reconnaissance, you see, that can give us a bit of extra information for the Super Series. Really isn't going Anton's way. He's w really suffering because of those missed darts at double in leg one. Tom Taylor should be all over this. Are you a subscriber to the Southern Hemisphere shots like that? No. 69. A lot of people aren't. I don't, I don't see the point. I just don't, I don't see the advantage. How many times do you see somebody left with 37? What are Dominic 37. Not very often. And the other person's on 38. <laughs> I'm starting to understand it now. He's a double 18 maestro. One. That's why he's gotten that rule on. Antonio Carr, 38. 106. Oh, yeah, that... Yeah, that would... That now makes more sense. 22. Dominic Carr, 36. Oh. Oh, what's wrong with... Double 20, 10, double 18. Game oh, show the second leg. There's Taylor. the double 18. There's 1-1. One, one. One of those so games that might just be a little bit scruffy, but I on. cannot remember the last time I saw Anton this angry. He is just not pleased at all. That's pleasing. One under the next tee. Like going to the next tee because you've three put at the previous green and saying, just give me the driver. Give me the driver. Tee Even the ball. when you shouldn't take one. Tee the ball high and go wallop. 139. Been one and having around out there today, that's for sure. Why you buy waterproofs? That's what right, they? Anton. Get your feet wet. You know what we want. Gimme, give gimme give a nine daughter. We want one ton and forty one. That's what we're after. One hundred. Anton Carl, one hundred and forty one be the first Swedish player to hit a nine dart leg here at the Super Series. And based on how he's One played nine. in this leg, stay angry. We did get to the bottom of the one-ton nickname and it's a rather long story. So maybe we should ask him to Talk about it in an interview instead of us trying to explain it. The third leg. Because he's just Anthony had the Holmes best leg of the day. They get a 2 1 lead against Dom Taylor there. He is yeah, nice reaction from well, Dom there. The appreciating Game on. how good that leg was. You didn't see Eric Bristow doing many fist pumps with John Law, Jockey Wilson, or Dave Whitcomb. 59. If Lazarenko gave. Jockey a fist bump. Well, it was a type of fist bump, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it wasn't reciprocated. 57. 57. Seen the recent feature the PDC have done with the 30 year anniversary, isn't it? In January. 140. They talk about Phil Taylor and. Oh, it's a lovely piece, that. I haven't seen that yet. I know they've got a gathering soon of a lot yes, of world champions, London. haven't they? 180. Speaking of gatherings, that is now four 180s in this game from Anton, which equalizes Scott Mitchell's best effort of the day. Now, that is a game that Mitchell won when he beat Erstland. So, 75. There was a thing or two about being handed an opponent who hits four 180s. Now he's done it himself. Could use another. 100. Playing this game a bit like a hobnob. He's constantly dunking himself in the 180T. Averaging 96. He's missed nine at a double pull. 140. Anthony Carr, 164. Makes belief, doesn't it? Where would he be? Had he been more effective? Nobody's averaged over 100 today. 100. But Anton Dominic would be right now had he been more effective on the outer ring. But here's the most important thing about this game. He might be level. Yeah, and it is level. A John beautiful Taylor. conversion from Dom in 15 darts means this game is level. And prior to this fourth leg starting there was like a, a 10 first. Game on. point difference in the averages yet that's been close to eight more importantly for dom as you said it's somehow two apiece 140 one more round of matches after this we see mitchell up against treadgold who we haven't seen for a little while he's had a bit of a break Dom will play Victor Tingstrom, and he will be the person trying to stop the Swede 100. from having the perfect 10 points today. And Bolton will finish against Anton. 57. An interesting grip that Anton has on his dart. It's very much inside the hand, and the interior of the right index finger pretty much stipulates everything with the thumb. Whereas 56. Taylor's grip is very finger-tippy. Yeah. I think that's why sometimes we can get a fair few darts left from him. Where he's just not opening the hand quick enough. That hand is 94. actually very perpendicular to the floor as it's being drawn up. And then the hand twists into position. A bit of Schindler about his throw. There's a little bit about it. I think there's a a bit of Schindler 100. about Anton all round, really. Same sort of haircut. Same sort of height. Love to do what Martin Schindler's done to this point in his career. Elevated German darts to a new level. 24. He's had a, a better time of things of late. The wall. Martin Schindler's the wall. Dom Taylor would be the pole. He is very, very One tall. That's why they call him the tower. The three days in this group, I wonder if he's towering over anybody. He'd like to be towering over Tinkstrom. 140, Dominic R. 105. This is brilliant. From Mr. Ursland, he's got four of everything. But he might not have three legs. But then again, he might. 57, Antonio Carr, 46. If you saw that on a fruit machine, he'd be loving it. Is he loving this? 
Game shot on the fifth He line. very much Anton is. Uthland. He's grafting away in this game. It could have got away from him, but he only needs one more, and Dom, who has had nothing go like to third third. his way Game easily on. today at all, he needs two more for two more points. You can see Dom Taylor's feeling it a bit today. I think there's going to be a real backlash from somebody tomorrow. Yeah. Someone is going to leave this place in the next hour and say, you guys better watch out tomorrow because I'm going to I'm going to tear you apart. And that's 95. the kind of mentality you should have if you have a bad Monday. Yeah. Come back in, bouncing on day two. Any idea what Dom Taylor does when he's not darting? No, I don't, do you? 96. Don't. Some of these players are fairly mysterious with their spare time. But we know that Anton, very much like Nathan Treadgold, is a bit of a musician. 140. Like I said earlier, he's the only person here this week, and indeed in this series, who has got a song on Spotify. Here's someone who's got a, a victory on the European Wonder Tour as well. He too played in Hungary at the MVM Dome and destroyed Vladimir Anderson, averaging high 90s, putting in a massive 145 finish, 99. I believe it was, to get that win. This one looks like it might be going the distance. Double 16, the big Dom. Game shot on the sixth Do leg. I dare Dom say Taylor. It? Big bad Dom. Uh, well, it's a big Seven bad leg. Seven final 12 leg and under throw first. Game on. But this is the leg he'd love to find something similar against the throw. Yeah, there's been some quality in this game. An 11 from Anton and a 12 from Dom. Averages reflect that, aren't they? 96, well, 94, 38, Anton. 94, 09, very little in it. And a mistake already from Anton. In ton plus visits in this game, they are separated by one. 58. Dom has 14. Anton has 13. Not surprised to see this fixture go all the way. Yeah, but they're separated in 180s by three of them. But it 85. doesn't feel like they've had that much of an impact because they all came at the early part of the match. Since then, gone to the well and, and it's been dry. Anton's been the more explosive. Dom's been... 99. A player that has just grafted. He's got nine scores of between a ton of 139. Just the four... For Anton, 140 line, line is 5 4 in favor 58. of Anton, a 180 line, 4 1 in favor of Anton. These are the legs where you really find out where your game's at. 100. What can you do when there is a clock ticking for you? Visits are minimal. Well, Dom in this leg has just sort of kept himself to 16. himself, hasn't he? He's not become animated. He's not got involved. I think only on one occasion today have we heard somebody celebrate a shot. Although we have seen a couple of juicy wiggles from Andy Bolton earlier. 99. How ironic would it be if Dom Taylor takes 145? We've just mentioned it. For Anton, when he was playing in Hungary. Sixty. And he Dom does not get to a finish. 45. So Dom Taylor could nick this with two visits, not just one.
Wrong treble, but he could go for the same one. In fact, both trebles now are kind. Treble 8 or treble 16. 129. That's worked out really well. That was a great visit. Been a great leg. One hundred and forty. And he needs to Don't hit it as well. 16. They are separated by 41 points in the entire game. And he find double eight for his second win of the day. No score. Oh, no. Anton Newcastle, 57. Anton yeah. Ursland was hoping for this opportunity, and he gets it. That's horrible for Don Taylor, isn't it? He's grafted so hard in this match. He can't contain his exasperation, but his opponent must be like a predator right now and go for the throat. Seventeen. How much has that double Don't top bed cost 16. him today? How many points? Almost. Like, he can't count how many points he's been denied. Chance number two for Dom. Not afford to squander these opportunities. Game he doesn't the squander John it this Taylor. time. A valuable two points for the young star from Bristol. And Anton Ursland will remain at the bottom of the table with Scott Mitchell on two points and Dom Taylor now occupies fourth position on leg difference only but he now has four points with Bolton and Treadgold when we come back it will be Mitchell and Treadgold in their final game of the day Hello again, welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Scott Mitchell and Nathan Treadgold are about to play. Three fixtures left to play today. Mitchell against Treadgold before Taylor takes on Tingstrom and Andy Bolton meets Anton Ursland. Victor Tingstrom, as you can see, 
the big winner today, winning all of his matches so far, and that puts him at the top of the Group A table, looking still for the perfect day. And there is still a scenario where he could be top of the group and everybody else in it could have 4.6 behind him. It's a stunning start from the Swede, but trying to close the gap. Here's Nathan Treadgold, who could get to six points with victory here, or Scott Mitchell could double his win tally for the day. Talking you through it is Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Many thanks. Yes, the Swede, Victor Tingstrom, is going to be top of the table regardless of what happens in the final round of fixtures. And many congratulations to Victor. It might even get better for him because if he can maintain the four-point gap at the top going into tomorrow, confidence will never have been this good when he's come to Hampshire, like that's Scotland for sure. Clubhouse leader. Game on. Now, what can these two do? Because Mitchell at the foot of the table at the minute, just to get himself in the mix, he could do with a win over Nathan. Stop him from getting to six points. Get himself 100. to four. And then maybe if Dom Taylor can beat Victor Tingstrom next, it will compact everything in the table and make it more winnable for him still from the last Seven. two games. Yeah, or the last two days of the campaign yeah. in Group A. It'd be interesting to see the reaction from both because, well, it didn't go well for either but i can't ignore the fact that 55. even in defeat mitchell averaged 92 26 where nathan 77.1 sort of in that territory where he was in his opening match of the day 140. i wonder which version of nathan treadgold is going to turn up because when he started today 78.23 and he lost 4-2 to Ursland, and we thought, okay, maybe that's very similar to what we saw from his ADC stats. But then his next two games, where he almost averaged 94, and then he had an 88 in beating Bolton by four legs to three, we thought maybe those 99. stats were misleading. But then he reverted to that high 70s range again in round four. But which version are we going to see this time? I think it's a really interesting name as well, Tread Gold. I wonder what the background is in that name. Because I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I've had some super names here at the Super Series. And if I may use an example of a Pittsburgh Steelers uh, NFL 95. player. Car, his surname is Louder Milk. It's what? Louder Milk. I wonder what they... That must be Origins. something to do with the dairy trade, surely. <laughs> And Angel that is a trade flag. that Scott, Scott Mitchell, Mitchell knows a thing or two about. And he likes a ton plus checkout as well, because he's just got one there for 1-0. But you would think that Something the name like Tread Gold would first. be something to do with on. finding gold, right? Or, or the search well, that, for it. That, yeah, that's my, that's my initial thinking. Because the surname Mason is to do with stonework, yes. isn't it? Yep. The word Cooper is to do with making barrels. Yep. Fascinated in things like that. 85. That's why going to Iceland is so interesting because everybody who is called S S O N at the end of their name, that's son of. And then Dotia at the end of a name is daughter of. 96. Well, the Treadgold name is. Warren Treadgold is an, uh, an American historian, but they're at the origins of. The name Treadgold was first found in Surrey. 140. I'm not sure if Nathan's going to be happy about that or not. They held a, a family seat at the Lords of the Manor. Are we going to have to call him Lord Treadgold now? Has he, has he got... 50 some sort of important blood? Mm. But it's certainly not a name I can recall ever seeing before. Yeah, it's a new one on me. Well, last week we had the King of the Castle and the Lord of the Board here. <laughs> 140. So over to you, Lord Treadgold. I'm 
not sure if he's got a nickname, but I suppose Guitar Hero would probably be working for him, considering how good he is with the guitar. Eighty. Scott Lucar, one hundred and thirty-six. So far, so good for Mitchell. This looks really good, really efficient. Not making many mistakes either. Ninety-six. Oh, this is Scott Mitchell somewhere around his optimum level. You ever noticed as well that with Mitchell and his dart shirts, he doesn't like the sleeves too long. He always gets them really short. Thirty-nine. He doesn't like them Scott to be in the way 40. of the bicep. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing more annoying. Game shot oh, on the second that's leg. Beautiful Scott from Mitchell. Scotty Dog. Slammed. Clean in the middle. So they Scott to throw first. Game on. Have you ever spoken to Scott about the, the colour pink? As to why he, uh, why he chose that colour? No. Uh, neither have I. Pretty much made that shade it's his fine. own recently alongside Keegan Brown. Keegan Brown now plays for Essex, doesn't he? He does, yeah. With Richie Houston, doesn't he? A bit of a schlep from the yellow white. 65. Still very popular with Scott Mitchell wherever he goes. Got to be somebody in darting circles to have your own fan base and for your fan base to have a name. 81. When they started chanting Farmy Army, I thought that's brilliant. Yeah. Even funny if they all turned up in tweed jackets and flat caps. 99. We're not that far away from the World Seniors Championship, which is in February. And yep, Circus Tavern. Tickets are available. www.dartshop.tv Scott Mitchell was there last year playing Robert Thornton. Thornton took exception to the fact that Mitchell was one of the favourites and dispatched him, but I wonder who the favourite's going to be going into that one, because if Leonard Gates wins 58. that, he'd have everything at the same time. He'll do the senior slam. Oh, yeah. I do believe I'm the first person to say the senior slam, so that becomes a thing. You are welcome. 140. Senior slam. And they give... Tiger Woods' his own slam, didn't they? Because he won four majors in a row, but not in the calendar year. So they called it the Tiger Slam. Mm -hmm. 85. Scott Lucar, 125. Well, he's not going to go for the 25 because he doesn't have to. Well, that's why I would have gone for it first. Yeah, if you can trim off the extra five... You can get yourself into, at worst, a range of 60. Yeah. Where it's 20 for tops instead of 10, 20 tops. We have seen a couple of examples 40. today Scott that maybe Car, Mitchell 70. is not at the forefront of board management. But at times, he doesn't have to be. You just have to be effective when you need to be. And he, he is right there the for 3-0. Like Scott Mitchell. And for the first time, the average dips below the ton, 98.02. Fourth leg, Nathan. Well, here's a question first. for you. Game on. As we might be going into the last leg of this contest based on how oh. Mitchell is playing compared to Nathan. Oh, by the way, I did have it. I had Mitchell down as favourite to win the world. Oh, did seniors, you? Seniors, yeah. Okay. It was so fresh off the back of coming off tour, and even though... He'd lost his card. Some of the, the level of performance suggested to me, especially when we'd what we'd seen already what the level of performance was in the seniors, I thought he clicks that week, he wins it. Alas. One hundred put an end to that. Could win it in February if he doesn't go back to the PDC tour. Could become one of those iconic players. That has won at Lakeside and the Tavern. 137. A very short list. My question is about the board management aspect. How difficult is it 
to know the route and to talk the route. One but to actually put it in play when you're on the hockey, when you're surrounded by the pressure of the game as yeah, well. Yeah, I think, I think when you're trying to almost reprogram, because even I 100. still make, because we played a certain way, even though I watch so much of it, when you're actually playing yourself, you're in that default mode. So you, you almost have to retrain your mind to, to think, right, I've, I've got to go that way. 140. Nathan's got to go the right way for this. If he doesn't get it, I fear he might lose 4-0 in as little as a minute. I'm practicing with Nathan Gervin and I'm watching him go ways and I'm, I'm what are you going that way for? And then he explains it. I go, yeah. 32. Scott Lucar, 121. I'll be on the same shot and then go back to the old way. Finish off a blinder. Trouble 17 and bull. Bullseye. And the Good win for Mitchell. The match, I Mitchell. did say that Nathan had to take that 124. It has been a decent first day for Nathan getting a couple of wins. But as it turns out, he will actually finish below Scott Mitchell in the table because of that 4-0 victory. So Mitchell goes to four points. Nathan stays there after that 4-0 victory and 103.6. Six is the best we've seen all day long. Will it be bettered by either Taylor or Tingstrom next? So two games left here at the Super Series on Monday, and the first features Victor Tingstrom, who's won all of his matches so far. The Swede has made a stellar start to the week. Four wins from four, as I said, and looking to go through the card if he can beat Dom Taylor in his last match of the day. Taylor has got a couple of wins to his name, and because the last match is Andy Bolton against the bottom player, Anton Ursland. This is huge for Victor Tingstrom. It's possible that he could be just a couple of points ahead of a couple of players going into tomorrow. He could also be six points clear of the entire field. This is a huge game already in this group and we've got a big team in comms to talk you through it. Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason. Trusting group to say the least. We're still here in the commentary box 
after 13 completed matches. And what a display that was from Scott Mitchell. Maybe just a little bit too late, but I guarantee you this. He wants Dom Taylor to overtake him in the table and stop Victor Tingstrom from That's getting like the 10 Dom points right first. now. If Scott Mitchell's to get Game the on. ideal last round of fixtures for himself, he's done his job. Now he needs a couple of favours to make sure he's in the reckoning a little bit easier for Tuesday. Yeah, that's the way to respond from a 4-0 drubbing by Dom Taylor is to hand one out yourself. And that level of play that I was mentioning that Scott Mitchell still has in the locker, there's the evidence of it. And he made it look very, very comfortable. Didn't he just? He was never put under pressure, though. And some people can play and thrive in games where they aren't put under pressure. 140. And there are other players who need to be put under pressure to get the best out of themselves. Yeah. Yeah, some players are reactive where 134. other players just make great leaders and, and front runners. That's why he was an England captain. Tom Taylor is very, very young in his career, just 65. like Victor Tingstrom. You say that Dom is just a little bit further on in his development? Yeah. By the very fact that he made a, a Pro Tour semi-final. And the players he beat en route. And I, and I think technically he's slightly better. Game shot on the first Here's leg. John point. Taylor. One five six, a wonderful shot out from Dom Taylor, and he might just be the so person to stop Victor first. Tingstrom in his Game tracks on. today. It's the biggest finish we've had today, and they're coming thick and fast. One hundred and thirty-four. Because all the big finishes seem to be coming from the people who've got the darts today. One two five from Dom a little bit earlier on. That was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, both very clean. You sort 59. Of, you get a feeling early on in a in a combination finish that it's going to go. We've had a 1-2-2 two, two from Bolton. We've had a 1-2-1 one, one from Bolton. 40. And that beautiful one twenty one to win the match for Mitchell in the previous game. Of course, don't forget that 1-5-6 There's only one route. One you can't get it a different way. Never been in a car with anybody where it says, that's the only way through. Stay where you are. Although there is a rule in Scotland, isn't there? Between the Aberdeen and Inverness, that if you're driving down that road, and you get blocked Which because of snow or something, you have to turn around. And yeah. then I think the, the reroute is about three hours. Yeah, they have they have actually have, have barriers. So if it's bad, the barriers come down, that's it. You can't go on. It's, all, it's Loch Lomond's on the left, isn't it, as you go up through there? Right. Just imagine a sign in Scotland like that, where it just says on the gate, get to. 83. <laughs> Who's your car? 72. Ah, I'll turn around then. Another one of those. Get to one. And he Age does on get to one. Leg, He's though. been doing that so effectively today compared to his last visit. He's been way more clinical. Third leg, Dom to throw first. Game Not on. a bad game so far. Yeah, Both averaging in three figures. So yeah, these two saving the best to last. Younger players are just getting warmed up. I think this is where what they do outside of the Super Series really comes into its own. Those challenge two ideas are so long. And yeah, and they play two on a day. Yes, they do. So playing five games of best of seven shouldn't really be a problem for the young guys. No, I do believe they've introduced two tournaments a day into the World Seniors Darts Tour. I'm quite sure how that's going to go down. Time will tell. 
And some of the players there, if they are displeased, I'm sure they will voice One their opinion. Foxy. How do you think Scott Mitchell's feeling about four points at the end of the day? 94. Compared to what's be, actually happened. Yeah, I think he'll be a little disappointed. I'm not necessarily... I mean, you look 95. at his, his level of play. Started with a, an 81.38. Won't be happy with that. Next up, had a 93.61. Be happy enough with that. Then had an 83.57. Again, will not be happy with that. 92. Then had a 92.26 and 103.66. So three of the five games on reflection, especially with how his opponents played 60. against him. Dominukar, 94. And listen, he's he's wise enough to know that's just the nature of darts. He could, he could roll up here tomorrow and, and go through the card. He would definitely be in the running if that were the case. A nice, a nice safe single. Yes, it was. Almost as if he wasn't going for the double. Fifty-six. Dominukar forty. And his tops for the tower. There's that Gary Anderson and Nathan Aspinall thing where they step on the hockey before they their foot behind it. I don't get it. I don't know why they do it. It's just a habit, 30. I presume. Victor Car 92. Of all of the players here today, nobody's shown as much emotion as Dom Taylor. Seven left. That leaves double eight. Oh. 87. That Too vigorous. Car 10. Too vigorous. And he does throw those darts harder than probably anybody who has ever graced the live lounge. Sometimes they just come out a bit too fiery. Next to the penthouse for the tower. Scared of it. Five. That's where Victor dark one's got to be. You've got to be aggressive on those doubles that don't break down. You're going to burn the dark. Burn it early. Game shot in the third leg. Here's the Victor ultimate price as Tingstrom dodges bullets. Both like Victor to throw first. Game oh, off. my Swedish is absolutely terrible. I have got no idea what Victor was saying right there. He's gone for a bit of an old school look when he's come back here. He's 58. Gone for the old Goodfellas stroke Sopranos haircut. And the chin strap beard. It's a strong look. Not quite on the. Level of dirty Harry, but fifty-eight. Well, in a month where a lot of people are growing moustaches for a very good cause, Victor's gone full beard. He's got a long way to go to get to Andreas Harrison. By the way, Damon Hatters is a bit special, isn't it? Yeah, isn't that's it? a bit Murphy's. I like it. It is Murphy's. Yeah, just gonna say that. I think you should keep it. I think it suits him. I grew 100. one of those 11, 12 years ago during November when I was at the Grand Slam and I liked it and then it came to the end of the month and I thought, well, I've got to shave it off now. I felt like I'd lost weight. <laughs> 168. And another gear here. Victor Tingstrom is looking to make it five from five. Well, one thing we do know about Swedes is that when it comes to rallying, they know how to change gears. And he's rallied ever since he won that really close 140. contest with Scott Mitchell in game two. And they're they're very stoic, which is where they make great poker players. One hundred. They make pretty decent chess players as well. Don't give anything away, do they, visually? There's going to be any reaction. It's out of sight of the opponent. 98. Victor Carl well, Victor hits tops. Game and does. And is Victor one leg away from being out of sight in the table. 
And he's racking up some leg difference, Nico. Fifth leg Isn't comes to first. Game there on. is a possibility here of something that I did not think was possible this morning. Kingstrom could be on 10 and everybody else could be on 4. That would 100. be five players in the rear view mirror of Tingston. And he's just way down the road. 60. Not another gear. He's in another car. This is better. One of the Much way. more like it. Two. Well, there's, there's no, as a player, as a dart player, there's no, 97. there's no, you don't want to lose a game, but when you're in a situation like this, when you're 3-1-9, you think, come on, mate, let's try and make something happen. And when when you do make it happen, it's such a great feeling. That's why the sport can be addictive. 100. Look how much he, without fear of repercussion here, look how much he towers over tops. Mm. Players do Dominic elevate their height by about three or four centimeters when they go onto that hockey, but when he retrieves these darts, just look how much he's above double top. He's staring down at it. 31. He's got the same build as uh, like a Dirk Nowitzki or 100. Dominic uh, Nanny. Giannis from the NBA. Okay, that leaves 78. He does everything to leave 36, yeah. Goes for ball 44. for tops and I don't get it. Still trying to figure out his game plan. Yeah. I don't think he knows. Should be going if if you love double eighteen, you go fifty four. Forty five. Don't look at the if, if, if you hit the single, you go trouble 12. He goes for 14 here. He's going to leave you perplexed, right? Yeah. Game shot on the fifth leg. Dom Taylor. He is definitely a chunterer. He's reminding me a little bit of Aaron Monk. Yeah, he's definitely a Six leg victory to throw first. Game on. I've watched uh, Steve Brown a lot over the years, and he is, he's fire in a glass, isn't he? 99. What is it about being Bristolian that gives you that fire? Is it, there's something about it? Not sure. There must be something about Sweden 97. and Norway and Finland and Denmark because of their nature of not giving much emotion away. And consider yeah, what... That's very much a Scandinavian thing, yeah. isn't it? Think about what some of their ancestors have done in the Did past. I mean, the Vikings weren't exactly short in coming forward. Well, they're quite a... Now, nowadays, they're a very peaceful nation, aren't they? It's their, their nature. I like that about a group of people. I like peace. I like quiet. Every now and again. 59. Just a little bit of drama. Getting to the end of 2023 all of a sudden, and we've got to start thinking about our games and 58. daily campaigns of the year. Who would be your player of the year when it comes to the Super Series in 2023? Is it even up for debate? Well, it's down to two for me. Daryl Pilgrim and Luke Littler. 60. I think Littler would be on the end of most people's tongues. Yeah. Performance of the year. I would probably have to go to Pilgrim. Yeah. 98. I think, I think session of the year would definitely go to Pilgrim, considering what he did with the one one eight and the one two two in consecutive matches. Yeah, and and Reese Robinson's got to be in there for some kind of award. One hundred. I'll have to put that together Flam in the next couple of weeks. Flamboyant player of the year, Reese Robinson. 
grafter of the year, Jim McEwen. 140. Victor Ducar, 128. Amen to that one. Now, 128, particularly tricky, but it is for 10 points. 56. Dominic Ducar, 48. This is to stop Victor from getting a shot for 10 points. One of two emotions are going to be shown here. Disgust or glee. Game shot number Door number six, two, Claire. please. Oh, it didn't look like glee to me. Maybe keeping that Seven and behind door number three. Through first. Game on. Could follow this leg. Here for Dom Taylor. He goes within two of Tingstrom. 59. Didn't think we'd be talking about this scenario so early. Where depriving somebody at the top of the table of two points is so important to keep everybody 46. else in the running. Victor stays at eight. Taylor goes to six. And then even if Usland was to lose to Bolton in the last game, he would still only be 85. six points behind. He wouldn't be eight behind, potentially. That still keeps him in with a shout on moving day on Tuesday. 123. The motivation for the Swede right now is that he just doesn't want to lose. Ninety-nine. This one's in the balance. He's only a dart behind. But he must make inroads because he's against the throw. Is there an argument for bull here? 100. Well, that was an aggressive play. The reason I said bull is because had he got the 25 with the previous turn, then he'd be only a ton away from a finish. But now he's only two singles and a 25 from a finish. 98. Fifty-nine. So Dom six. Ricard, uh, 160. 160 for Dom Taylor. He's already had the biggest finish of the day in this game of one five six. One hundred. What a beautiful last start that is. That makes everything easier for the next visit. The trouble 19 leaves tops. 133. Dominic R60. There is pressure. Victor is saying to himself right now, give me a shot. It's all up to you, Dom. You yeah. can be the man to beat him. That's okay, that dart, because he is so tall. He'll just dink over the top. Not that height. 20. And I Victor think Lucar, that 40. first effort at tops put him off. It gave him nothing in the way of information as to how he had to throw dart three. Tingstrom could be Mr. Perfect. Yeah, when it's your day, it's your day, Paul. 80 it's 80 his day, and Tingstrom. he gets 10 points. We've got carnage in this table. He can't believe he's just won five games out of five. Well, believe it, Victor, because you're at the top of the table by a stretch. You may not be caught, and if you have the same kind of day tomorrow, you might have it almost done and dusted after two days, never mind three. That's how he did it, and because he was so consistent, that's why he won 10 points from 10. One more game to come, and it will be the other Swede, Ursland, up against Bolton in our final match of the day.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where the man of the moment is here, Victor. Uh, congratulations, five Thank out you. of five today. Just Thank sum you. up how you feel. Uh, didn't expect it, but I just went in with a positive mindset and just wanted to have fun these first three days. And yeah, first day done, and it feels really good. Is that something that you learned from last time you yeah, were here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, last time I just focused on winning Group A and just really wanted to win Group A and didn't really find my bearings, you know, um, now I'm just here to have fun. I, I plan on playing Thursday and Friday and I mean, if it goes like this, I'm not playing <laughs> Thursday, Friday, but yeah, my plan was playing Thursday, Friday and good results, feel good. Yeah, I learned a lot of, from last time. The group that you were put into as well, there's some really good players, oh, yeah, um, yeah. Andy Bolt and Dom Taylor, Scott Mitchell, they're all made oh, quite yeah. short favourites yeah. for this group and of course Anton won a week last time he oh, was yeah. here. So to have done that in this group, how special is that? Really, for me, it's really fun and really special. The job's not done, but it's a good thing to keep, uh, keep in my mind for the next two days. I played good and it's special beating these players. I mean, this group is really good. So I'm, to be on top of the one day is really good. But yeah, the job's not done. Uh, just tell us a little bit about darts in Sweden as well, because, of course, I mentioned Anton's win. Andreas Harrison got right through to the uh, Champions Night last time he was here as yeah. well. So how much of an impact is the success of the Super Series having on darts back home? I feel like a lot of players from Sweden is really looking, this, looking at this competition like an opportunity and really want to play here, and everyone's watching it back home. And I mean, we're, we're really evolving in Sweden. We have a really good like top 10, top 15 of uh, players in Sweden. And I think you'll see a lot of us in the coming years, like here and maybe other competitions. And I think we're, we're, we're doing good right now. Yeah, and it's been a really good day from you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, look, Thank you. How do you keep it fun tomorrow? And how do you try and make it the same, knowing that you're in that top position, everyone's uh, going to be after you? Yeah, I, I think it's just the same mindset. You know, I had fun today. I didn't really care if I won or uh, if I lose. Um, I just wanted to play and I just wanted to have fun. And I think if I keep the same mindset for Tuesday, Wednesday, I can, I can win this group, but uh, that's not the goal. The goal is just win everything like on uh, Saturday. So good start, but yeah, we'll see what happens. A very good start. Yeah. Well done. Thank um, you. Anton Aslund, the Swede in the group, is in action in the final game of the day. He takes on the X Factor. Andy Bolton and Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason are in commentary. Thank you very much, Chris, and thank you very much, Victor. Great insight, and, well, maybe that's his secret formula, is to play with freedom. We often say that we can see players tightening in front of our very eyes. And uh, the key to success is to, is to try and play with the same Looks like motivation Andy first. as you do in practice. Game on. I think that's very wise. I think it'll be a lot harder for him to play for fun tomorrow, knowing that you are the person that everybody wants to beat. But you know what the Romans used to say when they used to 100. rule through territory and claim it as their own? They used to say, I'm our victor. <laughs> so there you go. He's at the top and looking over everybody. 44. In the darting Coliseum, that is the live lounge. It is still possible that somebody could get 30 points for the week. It's never been done, so no pressure, Victor. Only, only 10 more consecutive wins, mate. And even if he was to win all 15 games, it still wouldn't be the longest streak because now that's 17 for Daryl Pilgrim. 17 games in a row in this company. Have a word. Well, Andy is playing with and real vigor here, isn't he? Yeah, he's had it about him all day. He wants to be in second position. He wants to be four points behind. 55. Come tomorrow, because like we always say, from the end of Monday to Tuesday, there is an opportunity to close that gap if you play the last match. You play the first match the next Andy day. 32. Beat Anton not just once but twice, you'll only 
two points behind before Victor plays Taylor again. Game and that's the, the ideal flag. start. Andy Bolton. Very comfortable. 15 dart hold. Notice some of the intricacies like of the third, third. X Factor when Game he goes off. back from the board. He's always exercising something, whether it's a wrist, an elbow, a shoulder, always trying to keep loose. 57. I used to do that too, where I used to almost bend my shoulder the wrong way to try and get some freedom in the shoulder joints and the elbows. 100. Just how hard is it to, to balance things that you do in your ordinary life with playing seconds. darts? Because the positioning and the, the technique for darts is, is very particular. So if you are into other things or have a job that is very strenuous on the body, how difficult is that? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, you know yourself after a... A good session in the gym. You've got that stiffness to deal with, the recovery. But for a lot of people, exercise is not only physical, also 59. a great healer of the mind. Yeah, for me, it was always about exercising post darts. So get the darts done and then train 99. afterwards and have maximum recovery for the next challenge. Yeah, my exercise after darts was walking to a club. <laughs> 94. A bit of surprise there for Anton, who finds a triple 18. And we got a bit short in this final match so far, and Bolton seems to be more in tune with what's 85. needed. But again, this is why we, we talk about the likes of Ross Smith and Luke Humphreys. It's the... They, they make sure everything is on point. Never forget during okay. and the time that we were at the Rico Arena in Coventry that walking back from Marks and Spencer's in the morning, other supermarkets are available, by the way, and Ross Smith was running around the stadium. It was the only place he was allowed to do it because they had a certain perimeter. 85. And Antonio he was Carl running around the stadium multiple times just to run off his excess anxiety. 72, Randy Bolton for 2-0. 25, Andy O'Carr, 72. Two single 20s this time? No, he decides to go for the treble this time. But it is double 16 again. Game he only needs one this leg. time. Andy Bolton. Not the day that he thought he was going to get, but... Third leg, Andy did through first. Game on. He's not going to be the hunted this time. He's going to be the hunter. Yeah, and he's he's well aware of the intricacies of this format, as you rightly mentioned, Nico. A win here, and then a win tomorrow morning, first game on against Anton. 59. And he's just one win away from joining Victor on 10. Of course, they will they will clash tomorrow. Could well be 59. for the rights to be on the top of the table. Yeah, Bolton and Tingstrom face each other in the last match no, of round not. four tomorrow. There's a long, long way to go before we get there. Things could be very different. 100. That's why this is such a good discipline, you see. If it was over one day, and we said the winner of Group A on a Monday... 95. ...picked us in the finals. But he's only one third of the way there. There's nothing to say that he wins another match. He might wind up in Group C. 100. I think looking at this group, I thought... Andy would win Group 100. A. And if he didn't, he would win Group B. Because that tends to be what he does. I'm not even sure he's been in Group C yet. Not everybody can be Jim McEwen, who has won every group he's ever been a part of. You know that? 
No, I didn't. He's won a Group A, a Group B, a Group and C. And he's won 148. He's won a Saturday night and a Champions night now. He's won all five. All boxes ticked. That's a bit unlucky. 94. I'm going to have to introduce a Group D just so Jim McEwen can win it. 140. 14 for tops for 3 0. Just about gets that one. 34. Antonio Car 80. Not one ton that he needs. He needs something fairly similar to it. 60 for double 10. Gain shot on the third well, day. Five, five is good. Friend. Yeah, they were they were aggressively thrown darts. They weren't thrown in the the general Four direction. Four play first. Game on. See the frustration from Andy Bolton. He will feel like he should be three 0 up here and in absolute cruise control. That was a break back. Would you classify ninety seven Anton's day by how many times he's been on double five? Yeah, uh, I have absolutely no doubt that when we crunch 59. the numbers later his finishing stats will be the worst of all the six players in this group and his scoring 100. isn't necessarily that bad no he was 40 in his opening game four from 18 on doubles then it was one from five. 58. Then it was one from 13. Then it was three from 14. And at the moment, well, he's only had two darts at a double. Time yet, but time is always running out. One hundred and twenty. Time running out for him. Or is it running out for Andy? Because we do have that possibility if Anton wins this game, that five players Antonio Carl, will somewhat share second spot. Yeah, we'll have five players on four. Perfect for Victor. Another one, two, five. Check out. One hundred and one from Dom Taylor earlier. The same route of, as that. going to find himself on double five again. 99. Antonio Carr, 20. There's only one time when having double five is a good thing. He's not going to go for double five this time. 16. And the only time double five is good is when you're on 130. And you've got two treble 20s. Agreed. Two treble 20s. Two treble 20s. For double 14. 120. Could have won this by now. Antonio yep. Carr, four. He's had a, at least one dart at a double in every single leg of the match so far. I think if Anton was going to get a nickname today, it would be low ball because he's been on doubles that have had very small numbers. Twos, fives, ones. Game shot on the fourth leg, Anton Uslan. Yeah, he's been on double one more today than uh, the other players. He gives it a sarcastic look. Fifth leg, Andy. Never seen anybody first. so Game happy on. to hit double one. One of only a few doubles that have never been hit to win a world title. Fifty-eight. And you'd think in in the final of a a worlds with the tension involved that players would be chasing the doubles around. And ended up on double one. It has been hit to win a World Series event. One of the The very first Auckland Masters by Adrian Lewis beating Van Bonneveld in the final. They missed a bucket load of doubles each. And Adrian pinched the title on double 47. one. Guarantee you one thing. If Anton does win this game, he might want to give Andy a wide berth. Because if he walks away with only four points, he'll be livid. 57. Yeah, you'll feel slightly hard done by, that's for sure. 
100. Probably going to feel like Manchester United do at the minute. Playing fairly well, but 94. not getting enough points. Chelsea will probably feel the same after yesterday. Go for four goals and only get a draw. Antonio Carr, 170. Big fish time. Don't tend to go for the big fish in Sweden. They tend to go for the more and your car succulent, medium kind of fish, like a one two seven or one fifty six. One hundred and twenty. Anton well, Car surely Anton, make him say it. One hundred and twenty-seven in game. Like asking that young kid in Shrek Forever After, do the roar. Bullseye. 102. And oh, well. car 36. We dare to dream. Super, super close. This is not a nice double. 27. Antonio Car 25. That makes <coughs> any dark player wince when that happens. It shave the wire on two different doubles. It's double eight for Anton. He was 2 0 down. Nine. And you require nine. And he might be three two down. What an opportunity that was. He has now gone to double digits and doubles attempts. They both have. But it's Bolton who hits the front. Andy Bolton. Yep, leads three two, one away. Six leg Anton to through first. Game on. This early in the campaign, massive implications for Andy Bolton if he 60. would have lost this match. One hundred. Ninety-six. One hundred. Sixty. Rebels drying up. Anton Bolton here a decent visit still the darts in this sixth Two. leg but he's let Anton off there what are the back with a vengeance Fifty-five. And no finish. Antonio Car one hundred and five. Ninety-one. Eighty-five. Antonio Car fourteen. Good split this. He's going straight for it. Game on the it. sixth leg. Anton Usla. We are going to have a deciding leg. Plenty riding on this result. Seven the final leg. Andy did through first. Game on. One hundred.
97. Ninety-six. One hundred. One hundred and thirty-one. Ninety-six. Oh, time for Andy Bolton. Ninety-four. Thirty-eight. Andy O'Carr, eighty. Oh, left the one seventy just in case. to the match. 60. Antonio Carr, 170. 70. Another one of those. 140. Antonio Carr, 20. Ten. Oh, Antonio no. Carr, thirty. Cannot convert. Anton chose to stay on the treble twenty to leave the double fifteen. Now he's got a choice. Needs to make his mind up now. Single seven. Oh, double six. Twenty-four. Antonio Carr, ten. Six. Antonio Car six. Double one then. Unlikely looking win. And he finds the, the double one Lufland. and denies Andy Bolton two more points. So the situation that we said could happen has happened. Victor Tingstrom on 10 points. And then five players all on four points. Here are the numbers. 80.52 for Bolton. 80.10 for Anton Usland. And as we mentioned earlier regarding the doubling again. Four from just 16 attempts. Andy Bolton defeated there because of that number. 16.67%. 15 missed darts at a double. So let's join Chris and Paul on the balcony just for a quick roundup of what's happened so far today. Yeah, and we'll do that by um, going through the results from today, Paul. I mean, it's been a, a remarkable day, hasn't it? And Victor Tingstrom has been the surprise package. Every single one of his results uh, won by Victor. Yeah, brilliant for him. And I think it's fair to say that nobody else is happy with their daily performance. You look at someone like Dom Taylor, maybe Scott Mitchell, will feel a little bit better than he did earlier in the day. But overall, with five players on four points and you've got a six-point gap between the top and the rest of the field, things are going to have to change on Tuesday for this to be even any sort of race uh, on Wednesday because Victor could demolish this table by this time tomorrow if he does the same. Well, let's go through a couple of those players uh, one by one. Uh, look, the performance of the day came from Scott Mitchell, didn't it? It was an excellent display, over 103 the average, brilliant one-two-one-two, 
win the match 4-0 against Nathan Tredgo. We're looking at that now. That's what he can do. Yeah, this looked really, really comfortable uh, for Scott, and it was great to see. Early in the day, he just wasn't finding his range on his travels, and some of his approach play was maybe not to uh, the degree that he wanted, but he wasn't pushed in that game, and... Chris and I talked in the commentary box about how sometimes when you don't trouble him, he can just mosey on and do what look like spectacular things, but he makes it look just simple and very efficient. And that's exactly what the performance was. As for Treadgold, defeated in that one, but if you're looking for a double of the day, then surely his victories against both Andy Bolton and Dom Taylor on debut, by the way, would be that. Yeah, I have to say so. And maybe I have to retract what I said about nobody being happy on four points, but if you consider what he's done on debut today, if you'd have offered him four points, he might have said, maybe I'll take that. But he's taken out two of the favourites for the week in succession. And it'll be interesting to see what he's got in the locker for tomorrow. Yeah, some really, really decent stuff from him. Um, this one in particular, a 4-0 triumph against Dom Taylor. I would never have predicted this. And we're talking about an opponent here who has been to the final four of a Players' Championship event in the last month. And he's beaten the likes of Raymond Van Barneveld and Simon Whitlock en route to that. So that might just be one of the best wins that Nathan's ever had. Right, so we've said performance of the day, Mitchell. Double of the day goes to Treadgold. No doubt about who is the player of the day. Uh, Victor Tinkstrom winning all of his games. Uh, we can see some of his winning moments here. And he cited a change in approach for this performance. I'm not surprised to hear that the benefit of experience has definitely helped him uh, come into this second challenge with a, with a better mindset. But what I like is the fact that he has learned from that. He was very intense in his first week here, but coming into his second week, if he can just put the pressure on somebody else, that's good for today. But the pressure will be on him to maintain that massive gap that he's created for himself over the course of the five matches tomorrow. Yeah, to carry on that attitude, to keep it fun, now you're in that position of being the hunted, if you like. That's easier said than done, isn't it? Very much so. And as far as I'm concerned, Andy Bolton will be a very good hunter, as will Scott Mitchell, because they have hunted down titles and they have been hunting things their entire careers. So it'll be interesting to see what the young Swede can do when he's the hunted. Yeah, the good thing for him, though, is that, as you've already alluded to, he's a fair few points ahead already. We take a look at the table here. Remarkable to open up a six-point gap on a Monday, even if you do win all your games. You know what that table tells me, Murph? It's rather harsh on Nathan Treadgold to be last, purely because of legs won and his leg difference being the same as Anton Ursland. Things could have been very different. Bolton still finds himself in second, even though he lost that last match to Anton. But... That is a fascinating table just to look at, never mind uh, the fact that we've watched the 15 games over the last few hours. Uh, I don't know what Tuesday's going to bring now. Do you think we could get a real chase, or can you see uh, Tingstrom doing something similar on Tuesday? What we're going to look out for tomorrow is who can beat Victor. If they can't, then he's going to win this group. It's as simple as that. Because if he repeats that and gets to 20 points, the best that anybody else can do is get to 16, isn't it? Or is it 12? Yeah, yeah, 12 tomorrow. So, yeah. so there you go. He's going to be eight points in front if he does that tomorrow. So there you go. Uh, someone's got to beat him, and it might have to be more than one just to keep this interesting. Yeah. Will he be beaten? We will find out tomorrow. Remember, we are only on the YouTube channel tomorrow, so make sure you subscribe Modus Super Series YouTube channel to see if anybody can get victory over Victor. Can he be knocked on his perch? Find out tomorrow. See you then.